Mr. Howes, this thing's ready to go. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Would you like a verdict? I would. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So we have a All right, Ms. Rivers, are you ready? Let's get on the record, please. This is State versus Pittman and Sanders. It's a little before 11 on Tuesday, the 9th of April. We are one week and one day into this trial. I believe all our jurors are here. I'll bring them out in a moment. Mr. Hiles, did you have a chance to look at the proposed verdict form? I did. Any issues? No issues with the verdict form. All right, Mr. Hoover, good morning. Same question. Yes, Ron, I got a chance to look at it. We have no issues. Okay, um, it'll say Antonio Sanders on the Antonio Sanders one. This was just the Pittman go by. Yes. Mr. Brown, any issues with the verdict form? No. All right. I also have shared with all the lawyers the final version of the jury charge that is the product of our charge conference of last night. Um, the defendants were here for that charge conference. The court reporter was not. We all agreed she could be excused. I believe there were two things, one state and one from Team Sanders that you all wanted to get on the record, or you may want to get on the record. Um, so, Mr. Hiles, I'll start with you. Any exceptions to the charge as it currently stands? Uh, I just wanted to put on the record that the uh, non-pattern charge, the state would still request the non-pattern charge uh, for uh, abandoned and malignant part from Flinty State um, as discussed and filed with our uh, jury charge, uh, or request to charge. There's one other charge that was not requested by anybody, but there is case law stating that it should be given regardless of whether or not um, it was asked for, and it is the multiple defendant charge. So you have that language you can email to me? I do. Okay, let's do that since it's now after the charge conference. And remind me what the multiple defendants charge is. Is that that, um, well, why don't you tell me what you think it is? I'll tell you, it, it's a very, it's a brief charge. And it, and it states, though you may consider all of the evidence as a whole, conviction of one defendant does not necessarily require conviction of another or all. You, the jury, must determine the guilt or innocence of each defendant separately. Got it. I've covered that. Sentence two, verdict, page 12. Okay. Mr. Hoover, do you have any exceptions you want to get on the record? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I 
page eight, principal need not be prosecuted. I believe it's not necessary, especially since we have the conspiracy charge, the conduct in presence of parties and the party to a crime charge. I believe that what the principal charge says is covered with everything else. Um, and I, I believe it just shouldn't, it, it, there's no need for it at this point. Your Honor. Okay, understood. Um, and we discussed that yesterday. I appreciate your perspective. I think the way the closing arguments were presented, um, one, this is a proper statement of law, but two, I think it um, has a place, a proper place in this charge, given the facts and um, arguments in this case. Mr. Brown, did you have any exceptions to the jury charge you want to get on the record? No, Your Honor. All right. I think we're ready. Um, when the jurors come in, I'm going to ask them if they want my team to order lunch for them so they don't have to go out in this gray day. It's the least we could do for them. Um, so we'll cover that. And then you're ready to go, Mr. Hiles, with your um, part two of your closing. Yes, Your Honor. All right. I've got you down with just a little more than an hour left. Is that your understanding? I believe I had a, an hour and nine minutes. Okay. I have an hour and 10, but I'll take your number. No, I heard you say hour nine. So hour nine it is. Um, and I'll give you a warning when you are sort of at that nine minute mark, when you've burnt up an hour, if you're not done yet. Okay. All right. Um, warning's the wrong word. I'll just let you know you've got nine or 10 minutes left when we get to that point. Okay. Should you get there? Um, and then um, I'll charge the jury. Um, they will uh, be able to deliberate during lunch if they accept our generous offer to bring them lunch. Um, and we'll just keep going. I have court at two, so I'll be doing other stuff in here. We will pause whatever we're doing. The jury has a question um, or if there's a verdict and those things will be set aside, we'll bring the defendants back out here and work through whatever the jury's got. Um, anything else, Mr. Hiles, before we bring the jury in? No, Your Honor. Mr. Hoover. No, Your Honor. Mr. Brown. No, Your Honor. Okay. Um, counsel, you are free to relocate during the closing if you want. I think Mr. Hoover already set up a viewing area, um, so you're welcome to be there if you want to see what's on the screen. Um, and uh, uh, I will just um, admire the back of the, the screen during the, uh, the closing. Let's bring the jurors out, please. Thank you. 
All right, I'll reserve. Thank you, Deputy Gordon. Everyone can be seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Tuesday. Um, we are about to start with the last part of the state's closing. But before we do that, I thought I would offer up lunch for you all so that you don't have to go out and can get right to deliberating and not say, well, after you give us the charge, then we got a break for 45 minutes for lunch. If we brought in an order from Rosa's, it's a pizza place that will deliver here. Um, for those of you who didn't bring your own lunch, if we just get a number of pizzas, some of which don't have meat on them, um, is there anyone for whom that doesn't work? And they may have salads, we'll get a salad too. Salad's kind of messy back there, but basically it's sustenance enough for you to do your deliberating things. Um, anyone have an issue with that? All right. We'll take care of that in the background. Um, and uh, that'll be the plan for lunch, not to go out for lunch. Um, I'll say this, I'll repeat it when I'm giving you your charge. Um, you can break anytime you want. And so you may say, ah, we don't wanna deliberate right, right away. Let's just eat some pizza first. That's fine. Once you've got the case, you set the cadence. You may deliberate for two hours and everyone needs a stress break. You may deliberate for five minutes and figure out what you're gonna do. We don't dictate that timing or when you break. We'll have food back there. If you incorporate eating into your deliberations, that's great. You just have to have everyone in the room while you're deliberating. So if three of you say, nah, I want American deli, then you can't do anything until they survive and come back. Um, and then you can start up again, okay? Um, this screen is a screen we haven't used yet. It's from the district attorney's office. It allows Mr. Hiles to play um, more effectively as in no lags or delays or stutters. Um, some of the video evidence that's been admitted um, that he wants to share with you. It's going to make it a little hard for me to see you all, but you don't want to see me anyway. You're going to be looking at Mr. Hiles and that screen. I just wanted to explain why it's there. Um, and you may see Mr. Hoover and or Mr. Brown relocate near you all. Um, they just want to be able to see what's on the screen as well. And if there's nothing else, Mr. Hiles, you're up. Thank you all. Before I get into my presentation, I want to briefly touch on the defense's closing arguments last night. Now, what the defense told you was this DNA that was unaccounted for, these fingerprints that are unaccounted for that match other individuals, they said that are holes in the case that is reasonable doubt. And that's not so. What that is, it tells you who the missing parties of the conspiracy are. It has no bearing on the reasonable doubt that the fact that Leandre Pittman and Antonio Sanders were part of this conspiracy to commit these entering autos, to commit these car thefts, and that they killed Lawrence Denny in an effort to evade capture and to continue their work as a criminal street gang that has a revenue stream of uh, breaking in uh, to cars, stealing cars, and then stashing them uh, around the metro area. So, <clears throat> You know, it makes perfect sense that Keandre Baker's fingerprints were all over the outside of the Cadillac when we know that he showed up to help unscrew a license plate. You know, it makes perfect sense that his fingerprints are all inside of the Challenger as he is the only person associated with that particular Challenger. And I told you at the beginning, we knew that there was at least one more party, probably more, that were involved in this conspiracy. There are no holes in the guilt or uh, on the guilt uh, of Leonard Pittman and Antonio Sanders. Now, another thing the defense told you works straight into the beginning of my presentation. It's a narrowing of the timeline of events surrounding Lawrence Denny's murder. What the defense told you is that Antonio Sanders was a football field away when this event happened. That is a mischaracterization of the evidence. And I'm going to explain here. 
So when you're trying to get a timeline, what did uh, investigator Sajak told us was that he took the time of this video, the first video, or uh, the time of the first officer arriving, um, and compared it with the video that first picked up uh, an officer coming on to scene. But what we know from how that video was triggered was it was triggered by a flashlight. We don't see an officer on the screen of the Goodwill for quite some time. So what I had to do, and it, and it bothered me something awful, knowing that he said about 50 minutes. And he wasn't wrong with his actual calculations, but what he didn't account for is when the video started at the Goodwill. I went back and I watched the body camera and I matched the flashlight movements to the movements on the screen of the first Goodwill uh, camera where the officer was present. And that's how I was able to determine where the video started. So I'm going to start and play a series of videos, let you guys see it, and then I will show you the current screen captures and how the timeline can be narrowed. So this is the murder of Lawrence Day. Just after the car pulls away, you can see right there the impact of the first projectile hitting the box. So I took that screen capture. Okay. I took that screen chapter to cover the you know closest time of the actual shooting. Now, this is a video of the first officer arriving. Watch, watch the trajectory of this. See the trajectory of this flashlight? I'm going to play that one more time. So what I did was I took a screen capture, which I'll show you in a second, of the first time that flashlight hit the box to get an idea of when the officer first showed up, to get a real time to compare it to his body camera. Now, I'm going to play about a two and a half minute clip, okay? And you will see the officer walk back and forth through the body multiple times, shining his flashlight, and I will show you the pattern of where I started. Sir, sir. Not once did his flashlight hit the box. Not once does his flashlight shine on the wall. Yeah.
calls it right here. This in this corner is the Sitco gas station for everybody who is wondering the proximity of the Sitco to 911 call. What on? So what I did was I took the screenshot. This is the first screenshot. This is the screenshot at which I took for when the uh, projectile is striking the box. And give us the shooting time of about four or the time on the timestamp of about 433.48. This, you see the flashlight is on the box. That's the that's the screen capture. It gives us a, a time of 347. 24. Then I took the difference between the uh, uh, okay. This is the screenshot of the light hitting the pillowcase. I'm sorry. Screenshot of the light hitting the pillowcase when the officer first showed up of 433.48. This is the screenshot where the officer's body camera shows the light hitting the box in the pillowcase of 347. You get a difference of 46 minutes and 24 seconds. Then you get the screenshot of where the projectile hits the box, and that is 422.04. If you subtract 46 minutes and 42 seconds away from 422.04, you get a real time of 335.40. How does this fit into the timeline? What we know is that at 335.36 a.m., Antonio Sanders' phone is paired to a Kia. I'll oh, put him inside of the Kia. That fits right into the evidence of this crime because we know that there was at least one person waiting in the car while somebody got out to, to steal Lawrence Denny's car at gunpoint with force. And there was no shell casing. There was no nine millimeter shell casings recovered on the scene. Yeah, well, that's because it was fired by the person that was inside of the car, which would explain why there are seven shell casings recovered from inside the Kia. Not on the ground in the, in the Goodwill, but from inside of the Kia. All right. Let's take a step back and look at what we know from actual GPS evidence. So approximately six minutes before the shooting, Antonio Sanders is in the Forest Court's apartment. And keep in mind that for this block of time, 
we have every single GPS coordinate that was recorded by his phone. It recorded in inch increments. So it took him in less than three minutes. Antonio Sanders went from DeFore's court apartments to DeFore's bridge <coughs> apartments, which would follow that it would take less than two minutes to get to a crime scene that is closer than the two uh, uh, apartment complexes he is driving through. Okay? It is obvious based on their pattern of activity that they are targeting apartment complex, hotels, committing entering autos. Then, just after the just after the, the shooting happens, the murder of Lawrence Denny, Antonio Sanders, you watch away, cruising down Collier Road, where he hits the camera, is four tenths of a mile from the scene. Cadillac following, and both the cell. And so, what we know here too is he is on. Look at the duration of the call. So they are on. They are on the phone here. This call lasted 150 seconds. Antonio, just after the shooting or during this process, they are they are on the phone together. Antonio and Leandre for 150 seconds. License plate of the Cadillac track lit. Then, about a minute after the shooting, we get the 911 call from across the street, which would be perfectly in line with, I've heard some gunshots, do I call the police? Do I not call the police? Here's, here's the layout for you. Three minutes, 30 seconds, and uh, three out with 3.30 and 56 seconds to four score apartment. Three minutes, 33 seconds, three minutes, Gosh. Three hours, 3 a.m., 3.33, 39 seconds. The Ford Bridge apartments. Murder of Lawrence Denny is at about 3.35 and 40 seconds. At 3.36 at 3 a.m., on Collier, GPS, fleeing away from the scene, in line with Lawrence Denny's Cadillac. 3.37, 911 call. So here is the evidence that we have that all the cars are together and following each other. Kia. Cadillac. That is a car that looks awfully like a, <clears throat> awfully like the actor that was on scene in Gwinnett, uh, Gwinnett County, but also would match an infinity uh, profile for which we knew um, these individuals were in possession of. All right, same here. Infinity, it was on scene in Gwinnett County, which ties in to the ballistics. What we know about the shell casings that were recovered, all seven of the nine millimeter cartridge casings in the Kia matched each other, okay? The Kia nine millimeter cartridge casings matched it one of the 17, one of the 17 cartridge casings recovered from the parking lot of the Aranda and Gwinnett County. We have the Kia on both <coughs> scenes. The shell casings, not on the Collier scene, but it ex is explained by the fact that the shooting probably took place by the person that was in the car. Then we have four different nine millimeter firearms contributed to the 17 cartridge casings at the Aranda. And then three of those four nine millimeter cartridge casings from the Acura match the shell casings at the Aranda unit. Very likely that Acura, same car. But it's neither here nor there because we know that the two cars in that video are tracking each other. Just as Antonio Sanders and Leandre Pittman's phones were tracking each other. 
As the night progressed, those phone tower records match GPS records, and then they match uh, the license plate. All right. The projectiles that were recovered, the, the bullets that were recovered from the scene uh, at the 1180 Collier Road shooting, they were all nine millimeter. They were all nine millimeter ballistics. We knew that Brian Rutherford, he told us that a Glock 48 is only chambered in the nine millimeter caliber. Only chambered in the nine millimeter caliber. Directly, the day after the murder, Pittman is desperate to get rid of his Glock 48, which we know is a nine millimeter. He sends uh, a message over Instagram to free the gang, trading lot for a city. Follows up, the response is, you caught? Ben had money. And then just four minutes after the original message of trade the lot for the city, says again, trade me for the 48. And again, five, nine minutes after the original message, five minutes after the second message, it says, trade me twin. Desperately trying to get rid of a nine millimeter pistol. I can't tell you that that was the pistol that fired those projectiles. It didn't have it to test, but it's not a coincidence. Mm -hmm. And we see this pattern of this particular street game trading guns all of the time. I know that Antonio Sanders' firearm that he was caught with didn't match these ballistics either, but I'm not concerned with that because I showed you pictures throughout the last months leading up to this in the arsenal of weapons and the ability to trade weapons at a whim's notice. It doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. All right, but let's look at their actions and what they knew was happening. This is Antonio Sanders. Keep all of this in mind as part of a conspiracy. That one person who is part of a conspiracy that conspires with others to commit a series of crimes is guilty of those crimes so much as it is foreseeable that those crimes would be committed as part of that conspiracy, correct? So, also, this is what they do. This is what Antonio Sanders does. He has shown you a pattern. He has a propensity to commit these types of crimes. Watch this. Again, why did I put this picture? You have to long live KC, all right? KC is their friend who got in a shootout, who shot at an individual who was trying to stop KC from stealing his car, and KC was killed in that exchange of gunfire. After this happened, these defendants didn't stop their pattern of behavior. They knew that that was a possibility that they could get shot at, or that they would shoot at anyone who tried to stop them, and they glorified it. <clears throat> they built it up. It was a badge of honor. It was a status symbol. Long live KC, you died in battle. We out here striking continuously. So 
it was more than foreseeable to these individuals that when they were interrupted stealing someone's car that night, that they were going to shoot. And that doesn't even, oh, let me get that later. These crimes, they're done by the gang or the gang. It is a criminal enterprise with continuous revenue stream so they can get status amongst their peers and their community, their Instagram followers. They do not shy away from who they are, for what they want, and how they got it. It's a badge of honor. Us over everything. Sums them up. It sums them up. Their right to other people's property in their mind, what they have, their possessions, is greater than anybody's life. So how does this relate? We started talking about the gang, the person, the crime. <laughs> <clears throat> this here, this is Antonio Sanders' phone. This is how tied he is to the criminal street gang. We got D Shot, we know that's his name. And how does he describe his, his device? He describes it as, or D Shot's device name, Blazing Billy Trip 5. Blazing Billy, Sex Money Murder. You know, we talked mentioned yesterday how anyone born after 95, their identity is is their digital identity. Okay, but that, that generation, well, they're building their digital identity, their digital fingerprints, their digital DNA into the phones that they were arrested in possession of. That same phone that told you he was on scene for every act. Beyond great. But actually, I want to point one more thing out. Antonio Sanders' Instagram, I mean, email address, his iCloud email address, Young Crew Homicide. Bragging, owning that their crew is killers. Showing you how he acts and what he does when he doesn't get what he wants. This is the honor of hitting You see his cell number, 470-547-7446. I went through 13 different instances in his uh, Instagram records of where he gave that number out to different people. This one didn't share. It's tied to his identity. Many of those instances were you know, females that he would definitely want to know how they can get in touch with him. You can garner that from their conversations. I'm not going into what those conversations were. And device name, Blazer. When we hear about Blazer. Blazer is another reference to sex, money, murder. That's what these guys glorify. Sex, money, and murder. And then, slide the world two guns. Just like his buddy Sanders. Direct reference to two guns. Sex, money, murder. Slide the world, two guns. At one point, you even saw that as his continuously changing Instagram. Identity tied to the gang. YSL, gang of sign in front of their own face. Picture posted by this thing. Show <coughs> that, that what he does, everything he does is tied to his game, how they, they view him, how he is ranked amongst his peers, his stats, all tied to the game and the crimes that they commit. Again, so this video pulled from Sanders' phone, his cell phone. Okay. 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 Okay.
Bring Will Max. We know Will Max is Keandre Baker. Some point during this video field was filmed. Keandre ba Baker must have been locked up. But then, again, long live KC. A person they knew shot at the owner of a car that he was trying to steal. And was killed. He's glorified. And then they continue to repeat the action. All right, now, we know that the entering autos and the license plate of that Kia was uh, in the um, parking lot of the uh, Aranda starting at 1.30. They pull in at 1.30, and at 1.29.23, Antonio Sanders is eight one hundredths of a mile from that scene. So, this is phone calls here. We have a phone call between uh, just as you're calling in for a uh, phone call, you have a phone call between Leonard Pittman and Antonio Sanders. That 547-6240 and 547-7446. Just before everything goes awry, with Gwinnett and at the Goodwill, you always see them calling each other. It's a pattern. There's no doubt they are part of this. Uh, criminal enterprise this conspiracy to commit any autos and to steal automobiles, hijacking, entering autos. It's a pattern which they developed. <clears throat> yeah, Antonio Sanders at 204. Where's he headed? He is. In the general Buckhead area, area, just off of, of City Marcus, in Buford Highway. Look who's on the phone with it. It's purple. Sorry, it's cut off a little bit here. The blue but you know it's Antonio Sanders, DeAndre Pittman, perfectly in line with that cell site location information is where you would expect him to be. That shows you the accuracy of the cell site location information. Here we go. We're getting back to the scene of the crime. Again, together, 3.30.56. Just before, 3.30.3.39. And then we know at that 3 minutes 35, 3 out, 3.35.40, that's the closest account of when the murder happens. Perfectly, continuously moving in the same direction, in the same amount of time. This isn't a coincidence. All the way up in Gwinnett County, perfectly tracking everywhere they go, what they leave is a, a trail of bullets and shattered glass. And you've heard the testimony from J.P. Miller yesterday how these games are expected to act amongst each other. You have to contribute. You can't just be a passive member. If you don't, you're not a part of it. There should be no doubt. <clears throat> and I've never once claimed to you to know who pulled the trigger. Okay? Never. I, I don't, even, if, even if you had the DNA matched it to every person that was in that car, fingerprints, to who are in that car, you'd be asking the same questions. You pulled the trigger. Well, it doesn't matter because the crimes of one are attributed to all under the law. Under the law. He did.
In County of Sanders, one scene here, 56, five old national. That's Camelot. So, so the gang is their home base. Okay. Biscayne Apartments, other home base. Here, from 5 10 a.m., 536 10 a.m., he's in the apartment complex of 3200 Stone Road. What um, Special Agent Bilson told us was even though these aren't on top of each other, this is a massive apartment complex, and we know that he is inside the uh, perimeter of 3200 Stone Road. Five twenty-two forty-three. That's when the when the phone call, or that's when the uh, nine one one call was joined our places. Sanders is there. Five twelve. We know this is the cell tower that Keandre Baker's getting off of, but we would expect Keandre Baker to be in this area, in this quadrant, based off of his cell site location information. What we also suspect is that he posted a video, which the uh, Santa would have gotten the name, but we knew he posted a video with that challenger with the ball, the ball marks on it. That was the video uh, that was the link to Keandre Baker that really blew up this whole case. They're there together. All right. Back to these Instagram records. These are Instagram records, just the day after. Just the day after. For the day up, the day up, asking where's the infinity part? Where's the infinity? Who got the keys? More concerned about getting access to a stolen vehicle than about the man that they murdered the night before. He's going about his business. What does he say? So this is on UTC time. So that's going to be about just after noon, Eastern Daylight Savings Time. This is a pretty good game. That Cadillac got the wit. He was on scene. He knows the Cadillac got shot repeatedly. Read the game. Gutta and I already know him. Then he responds to a story that must have been finished. Maybe 30 seconds after he sent the Cadillac got blitz. You know what he says? Bra died last night. Bra died last night. Put that in context with his cell phone, the way it traveled from crime scene to crime scene, leaving shell casings, projectiles, shattered glass, ruined lives. Only somebody who participated in those events would know that would be able to frame or reference. We like more videos recovered from Antonio Sanders' phone. This is going straight back to their stats. What do they do with the proceeds that they steal from hardworking individuals staying at hotels, traveling, apartment complexes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. He tells you who he is. They tell you what they do. I know I'm set covering this, but it is so central to the case. Because it's coming from their mouths, their recordings. This is him. This is an admission. Proceeds, this Cadillac, proceeds stolen during criminal street gang activity. And at 926 of the day of the murder, Lawrence Denny, after killing a man, Antonio Sanders is joyriding in the car, listening to music. That playlist he was playing. Listening to Rich Inward Shit by Young Thug. Gangsta Crying. Rich Criminals. Again, playing Young Inward Shit. Listen in the thug inward life. Listen into five stars. What do we hear about the five pointed star? It's a sign of the United Blood Nation. Crazy life. Crazy life. Again, replacing. The C and crazy with a B. His blood's going wild. Blood's going crazy. Rich as hell. Snitches and rats. Hours after murdering Lawrence Gay. Cruising. 
in a dead man's Cadillac. It got glitched on bad. Just doing some gangster shit, listening to gangster music. They tell you who they are, which is why you should have no doubt that they participated in every act of this conspiracy. Again, talk about membership of the game. It's real easy. And tell you Sanders has already pled guilty. He will have a copy of the indictment or the accusation that he pled guilty to from Douglas County. Admission that he committing crimes in furtherance of 5275 Slime Gang Young Crew. Did it once. He did it again here. He did it well. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what this is. It's a dollar bill. It's the perfect representation of what it means to know beyond a reasonable doubt. You don't need all of the pieces to know beyond a reasonable doubt that these defendants, Sanders and Pittman, that they participated actively in every part of this conspiracy on October 20th, 2020, starting at 1.30 a.m. in Gwinnett, driving down, murdering Lawrence Denny, doesn't matter who pulled the trigger. For all intents and purposes, everybody in that car pulled the trigger, even though it was one bullet, one projectile that ended the life of Lawrence Day. So, you know, there could be some references made. You don't know what they were talking about on those phone calls between each other. We don't. But what would a reasonable what would a reasonable person know? Well, after that first incident where shooting just popped off in the parking lot of, of a uh, hotel that they were entering cars in, you know, you know, Antonio didn't call Leandre and say, "Yo, little head, those nuts are crazy. Can't believe they shot. Can't believe that." We gotta get away from these guys. No. What did they do? They continued to travel right behind each other. Got a lookout. You got active participants getting out of the car. You got a driver. You got someone ready to shoot in an instant. In an instant. <clears throat> it's not reasonable to say that they were talking about or not knowing what was going to happen, what would be the natural consequences of their actions. Even before this day started, keep going back to KC, you know? How does this tie to the game? You have the game, 5275 Slime Game Young Three, made up of members of YSL, Sex money murder. What are the crimes that they commit? Entering autos, aggravated assaults, homicides, hijacking in the first degree. How does that connect back to the gang? What you saw throughout this was it all the cars, the proceeds that were taken, they were sold. Or stash, constant chain of communication between the gang members. Where's the call? Who's got the keys? And when they acted, they all acted together. You see that on the videos. Both the video from Gwinnett, the video of the entering auto from the CSA's driveway. Sanders clear as day. That's Everything they do is 
to keep their gang going. That's all they care about. They care about theirs and their own. They don't care about civilians. They don't care about who interrupts them. They don't care where the projectiles go when they leave the end of their guns. It all comes back together. You have to care together. This isn't circular. It's required by law to share that solution. That next, that further. How does shooting, how did murdering Lawrence Denny further the interests of the gang? It allowed them to take his car. It allowed them to get away, continue their criminal endeavors. Straight to the area where the license plate was stolen. These aren't coincidences. Not this much data putting in like every crime scene. Look at the times. This is between 1.30 a.m. and 5.30 a.m. On like a random Tuesday. Yeah. Normal individuals their age are asleep. Oh, I can't read this. Look at the data on the cell records. The plots, the major plots where they, they stopped for the long time. It's either hotels in Gwinnett, they're right driving right around the Andrews Creek Park in Bucket, which is a very nice residential neighborhood. Yeah, I can so they have high family to get into. But it's just like frozen for some reason. Large premises to store valuables in the okay. car. Miss Cece's address. A very nice, very nice residential neighborhood. They're going to the areas where they know they have the highest likelihood of getting proceeds within the day. It's in their digit, their, their, their DNA is built in their bones, their presence. Even, even the photographs, you know, we never got Antonio Sanders' uh, actual Instagram records, your testimony of how often he changed. But the photographs that were contained inside his phone that we showed were the same photographs that were posted on that tailor made file. They were taken with his phone. His videos on with KC, counting cash with the other gang members. I don't have any shit <coughs> means to get all that. Selling cars for nine hundred dollars, cheap Cherokees with the key. Every aspect of their life revolved revolved around the gang, social status, and their status within the gang. Is that so much so that they included on their Instagram accounts the passwords? The way they name their devices. Look before, during, and after. That's how you determine if there was a conspiracy. There's no doubt what we did. There's no reason. We know exactly the role that these two play, that they were part of that conspiracy. These puzzle pieces, I would love to know who else exactly was there. That's all. And you'll be instructed by the judge that it doesn't matter that those other individuals are not before you for consideration of their guilt. You are not to consider the fact that those others are prosecuted. You are only here to consider the fact. Antonio Sanders, the Andre Pittman, part of the conspiracy, and murdered Barnstein in cold blood. That would happen in full. Told you, multiple officers told you the address. And you, the citizens of 
full county are the ones that we consider this case. The citizens of Fulton County, the actions of the county of Sanders and the other Pittman, that's real by Fulton County. We do have gains. They are young. It is sad. I acknowledge that. I wish we weren't here today. But you have to hold them accountable. I think you find them guilty in all counts as church. Thank you, Mr. Hiles. <clears throat> Like that would be great. Um, I'm pulling something up that'll be on the other screens, um, but uh, I like to be able to make eye contact if possible while we do this. So ladies and gentlemen, in a moment, I am going to share with you the law that you must apply to the facts as you find the facts to be. I am required by law to present it orally, as in read it to you. You are welcome to write down what you want. The thing I'm reading from will go back with you. This is the jury charge. Uh, it'll be made part of the official record, partly because Ms. Rivers will take down what I say, but this document will be part of the record and I intend to read from it won't be quite verbatim because I may say, like we saw earlier today or something like that, but the language of the law is here. So you will hear me say it. It will also be on these screens. Some people like to see the words as well. If that in increases your um, intake of the charge, you're welcome to follow along on the screen. But most importantly, this document will be available during your deliberations. Secondly, um, I just wanna let you know in advance, um, I do my best to make this language accessible to everyone. It doesn't make any sense for me to use big legal words that you then go in the jury and say, I have no idea what he said. The point is for you to understand the law so you can apply it to the facts to decide, did the state meet its burden? There are a few phrases that I am required by appellate court opinions to use that when you hear them, you're gonna say, no one talks like that. Why are you doing that? And the answer is, cause I have to. You're gonna hear the phrase abandoned and malignant heart which to me sounds like something a doctor might say. And we're here in a courtroom, not in a hospital room. But there are a few phrases that um, are required by law to be used when defining or explaining a concept. But in general, I hope that you find what I share with you to be accessible because you need to access it while you're considering the evidence um, during your deliberations. Let's see if I can get this to work. There we go. Well, excellent. A grand jury has indicted the defendants for murder, felony murder, aggravated assault, hijacking a motor vehicle, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, and violations of the Street Gang Terrorism and Prevention Act. That's this indictment, which you will have with you during your deliberations. The defendants have entered pleas of not guilty to all these charges, neither the indictment nor the pleas of not guilty are evidence. In fact, the defendants are presumed innocent and this presumption remains with them unless it is overcome by the state 
with evidence that is sufficient to convince you beyond a reasonable doubt that one or both defendants are guilty of one or more of the crimes charged. The state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt every material allegation of the indictment and every element of each crime charged. And the elements of the crime are things I'll be sharing with you soon. The elements of murder are A, B, C, D. Those will all be in the charge that you get. There is no burden of proof upon the defendants and the burden never shifts to them. If a defense is raised by the evidence, the burden is on the state to negate or disprove that evidence beyond a reasonable doubt. The state is not, however, required to pr prove either defendant's guilt beyond all doubt or to a mathematical certainty. A reasonable doubt means just what it says, a doubt based upon common sense and reason. It's the doubt of a fair-minded, impartial juror honestly seeking the truth. It does not mean a vague or arbitrary doubt, but is rather a doubt for which a reason can be given. And that reason arises from your evaluation of the evidence, lack of evidence, or conflict in the evidence. If, after considering the evidence, you find that your mind is wavering, unsettled, or unsatisfied, that is a doubt of the law, and you must acquit, which means find not guilty. If that doubt does not exist in your mind as to one or both defendants guilt, you would be authorized to convict. Evidence that merely places upon the defendants grave suspicion of the crimes charged or merely raises a speculation about their guilt is not sufficient to authorize a conviction. Whoops. Oh, I'm hitting the wrong direction. Um, it's my responsibility to instruct you on the law. You are bound by my instructions. It is your responsibility to determine the facts from the evidence presented. You must then apply the law I'm giving you to the facts you find. You must decide this case based only on the evidence presented during trial. And that evidence consists of the testimony you've received and the exhibits. Evidence does not include the indictment or pleas of not guilty, anything I've said, anything these lawyers have said, to include their opening and closing remarks. Nor does the evidence include questions that were asked. It's only answers, which is the testimony of the witnesses. Now, the evidence you've received may be direct, circumstantial, or both. An example of direct evidence is the testimony of a person who asserts that she has actual knowledge of a fact, like an eyewitness. I saw the car run the red light and hit the pedestrian. I was there, I saw it. Direct evidence. Circumstantial evidence of proof is proof of one or more facts that tend to prove or disprove some other fact by inference. Someone may walk in here in a moment with an umbrella and kind of wet. That is not direct evidence that it's raining, but it's circumstantial proof. Why else do you have an umbrella? Why else would you be wet? There's no legal difference in the weight you may give to direct or circumstantial evidence. And in considering this evidence, you may use reasoning and common sense to make deductions and reach conclusions. However, you may convict only if the evidence, whether direct, circumstantial, or both, excludes all reasonable theories of innocence and proves the defendant's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Ladies and gentlemen, you must determine the credibility or believability of the various witnesses who appeared before you. In deciding this, you may consider all the evidence, the witnesses' manner of testifying, their basis for knowing the things about which they testify, the probability or improbability of their testimony, and their interest or lack of interest in the outcome of this case. And the credibility of a witness may be attacked by disproving facts to which the witness testified. If a witness's credibility has been attacked, you may consider evidence offered to support the credibility of that witness. You've heard from several expert witnesses. Experts are those who, because of their training and experience, possess knowledge in a particular field that is not typically known to the average person. Experts are permitted to give their opinions based upon that training and experience. However, the testimony of an expert, like that of all other witnesses, should be given only the weight and credit you believe it should receive. 
The testimony of a single witness is sufficient to establish a fact. Corroboration of a witness is not required, provided you find the witness's testimony to be sufficient. Defendants who have no burden to prove anything are not obligated to testify. When, as here, a defendant chooses not to testify, you may not consider that decision in any way in reaching your verdict. Sometimes evidence is admitted for a limited purpose or against one defendant and not the other. Such evidence may be considered only for the purpose to which the evidence is limited. Here, evidence of alleged crimes not charged in the indictment has been offered as proof of the existence of a criminal street gang and or proof of criminal gang activity and a defendant's involvement in it. You may consider this evidence only insofar as it may relate to that defendant who was named in the testimony and not as to the other defendant. The state must prove the identity of the persons who committed the crimes charged beyond a reasonable doubt. Your determination of identity is dependent upon the strength of the evidence offered for this purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, a crime occurs when the law is violated by a defendant's intentional actions. Intent is an essential element of every crime. Criminal intent is not the intent to violate the law, but means simply the intent to do the thing that is illegal. Intent may be inferred from the evidence. It may also be inferred when it is the natural and necessary consequence of an act. The defendants are not presumed to have acted with criminal intent in this case, but you may find this intent or the absence of it from consideration of words, conduct, demeanor, motive, and other circumstances connected with the acts for which the defendants are being prosecuted. The state must also prove beyond a reasonable doubt that each defendant knew that the crimes charged were being committed and that each defendant knowingly participated in or helped in the commission of such crimes. You may not find a defendant who was merely present at the scene of a crime at the time it occurred guilty of the crime unless the evidence shows beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant committed the crime helped others to do so, or otherwise participated in the criminal activity. In the same way, you may not find a defendant who merely associated with others involved in the commission of a crime guilty of that crime unless the evidence shows, beyond a reasonable doubt, that the defendant helped in the perpetration of the crime or otherwise participated in that criminal activity. A defendant engages in a conspiracy to commit a crime when he, together with one or more others, agrees to commit a crime and one or more of the members of that group does any act to bring about the object of the conspiracy. A conspiracy is an agreement between two or more people to do an unlawful act. The existence of a conspiracy may be proven by conduct as well as by proof of an express agreement. When people associate together in an unlawful enterprise, any act done by one conspirator to further the conspiracy is legally the act of all the conspirators. However, each person is responsible for the acts of others only insofar as those acts are done to further the conspiracy. Presence, companionship, and conduct before and after the commission of the alleged crimes may be considered in determining whether these circumstances give rise to an inference of the existence of a conspiracy. Every party to a crime may be charged with and convicted of a crime. A person is a party to a crime if that person, A, directly commits the crime, B, intentionally helps in the commission of the crime, or C, intentionally advises or encourages another to commit the crime. 
Any party to a crime who did not directly commit the crime may be prosecuted for the crime upon proof that the crime was committed and that the person was a party to it. Even though the person alleged to have directly committed the crime has not been prosecuted. Criminal cases must be tried in the county in which the crimes were committed. This question of venue, that is, were the alleged crimes committed here in Fulton County, must be proved by the state beyond a reasonable doubt. Here are elements. For murder, the state must prove that a defendant, number one, caused the death of another person, two, did so unlawfully, and three, did so with malice of forethought. The killing must have been done with malice to be murder. However, malice, as the term is used here, does not necessarily mean ill will or hatred. What it is, is the unlawful intent to kill. And you may find this malice, this unlawful intent, when the circumstances show that the defendant acted with the deliberate intention to unlawfully take the life of another. You may also find malice when there does not appear to be any significant provocation and the circumstances of the killing show an abandoned and malignant heart. The state does not have to prove premeditation to prove murder. If a killing is done with malice, that is unlawful intent, it is murder regardless of how briefly the malicious intent existed. No specific length of time is required for malice to arise in a defendant's mind. Malice may be formed in a moment, and instantly a fatal wound may be inflicted. If malice was in the defendant's mind at the time of the act that killed, and it moved him to do it, that is enough for the killing to be murder. Proof of motive is not an element to the crime of murder. Evidence of motive, if any, has been admitted for you to determine whether it establishes a defendant's state of mind at the time of the killing. A felony murder is also charged in this indictment. And for felony murder, the state must prove that a defendant, number one, caused the death of another person, two, by committing a felony. The state does not have to show that the defendant acted with malice, that unlawful intent to kill, to prove felony murder. Aggravated assault and hijacking a motor vehicle are both felonies. You may find a defendant guilty of felony murder if you believe that he caused the death of another by committing the felony of aggravated assault or hijacking a motor vehicle, regardless of whether he intended the death to occur. There must, however, be some causal connection between the felony and the death. Felony murder is not established simply because the death occurred at the same time as or shortly after the felony was committed. This felony must have been directly caught. The felony must have directly caused the death or played a substantial and necessary part in causing the death, regardless of when the death ultimately occurred. Aggravated assault. A person commits an assault when he attempts to commit a violent injury to another. A person commits an aggravated assault when he assaults another with a deadly weapon, and a firearm is a deadly weapon. For hijacking a motor vehicle, the defendant must prove that the state must prove, the state must prove that a defendant, one, took a motor vehicle from another, two, by force or intimidation, three, while possessing a firearm, and firearm includes any handgun. Possession of a firearm during commission of a felony. A person commits the offense of possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony when he possesses a firearm during the commission of a felony. Murder, felony, murder, aggravated assault, and hijacking a motor vehicle are all felonies. And again, firearm includes any handgun. Criminal gang activity. The defendants are charged with several counts of violating the Street Gang Terrorism and Prevention Act, or SGTPA. I'm going to call it the act from here on out. One way a person violates the act is when he, while associated with a criminal street gang, commits any criminal offense that constitutes criminal gang activity. 
in criminal gang activity means the commission, attempted commission, or conspiracy to commit any criminal offense in the state of Georgia that involves violence, possession of a weapon, or use of a weapon, which means murder, felony murder, aggravated assault, hijacking a motor vehicle, and possession of a firearm during commission of felony are all criminal gang activity. To prove a violation of the act in this way, the state must show, number one, the existence of a criminal street gang. Number two, that the defendant is associated with that criminal street gang. Number three, that the defendant conducted or participated in the alleged criminal act. And four, a nexus, a connection between the crime that was committed and the gang. Criminal street gang means any organization, association, or group of three or more persons which engages in criminal gang activity. The existence of a criminal street gang may be established by evidence of a common name or common identifying signs, symbols, tattoos, graffiti, or attire, or other distinguishing characteristics, including but not limited to common activities, customs, or behaviors. The defendants are also charged with violating the act by engaging in efforts to maintain or improve their gang status. It is also a violation of the act for any member or associate of a criminal street gang to commit any offense of criminal gang activity with the intent to maintain or increase his status within the criminal street gang. Another way in which the defendants are charged with violating the act is by acquiring property through criminal gang activity. So I'm telling you that a defendant also violates the act by acquiring the property of another through criminal gang activity. Ladies and gentlemen, in the jury room, you will have two verdict forms, one for Mr. Pittman, this is Mr. Pittman's, one for Mr. Sanders. They are identical, but for the name on the verdict form. You should consider each count of the indictment individually as to each defendant. Each defendant may separately be found guilty of some, all, or none of the charges. If, after considering the evidence, together with this charge, you should unanimously find, beyond a reasonable doubt, that one or both defendants did commit here in Fulton County any of the crimes alleged in the indictment, you would be authorized to find that defendant guilty. In that event, the form of your verdict would be, we find defendant X guilty. And you would check that option on the verdict form for that offense, for that defendant. Each verdict form has every count listed, except count nine, that's not before you anymore. It lists the count, it says we find the defendant, there's a blank next to it says not guilty, and just below it, a blank, and it says guilty. And that's what you check. If you unanimously conclude that the state has proven guilt beyond a reasonable doubt, you're authorized to check guilty. If the state has failed to meet that burden, you and unanimously decide that, you must check not guilty. Now, if you do not believe that a defendant is guilty of a particular offense, or you have any reasonable doubt as to that defendant's guilt, then it would be your duty to acquit him, in which event the form of your verdict would be we find the defendant X not guilty. And you would check that option on the verdict form for that offense for that defendant. Whatever your verdict is for a particular count, it must be unanimous. Your verdict must also be in writing, hence the verdict form, signed by your foreperson, that's someone you will select in a moment, and dated. By no ruling or comment that I have made during this trial have I intended to express any opinion about the credibility of witnesses, the evidence, or the possible guilt of the defendants. Your verdict must be based solely upon your consideration of the evidence according to the laws I've just given you in this charge. It is your duty to consider the facts objectively without favor, affection, or sympathy for anyone. It is also your duty to report to me if you perceive that a fellow juror is making decisions based upon improper considerations of race, gender, religion, or sexual orientation. 
one of your first jobs in the jury room, oh, I skipped one. You are the fact finders in this case. You are not to concern yourselves with punishment. That is my role. That's the role of the judge. One of your first jobs in the jury room will be to select a four person who will preside over your deliberations and who will sign the verdicts to which all of you freely and voluntarily agree. You should start your deliberations with an open mind, consult with one another and consider each other's views. Each of you must decide this case for yourself, but you should do so only after a discussion of the case with your fellow jurors and a careful consideration of the evidence. During your deliberations, you must not communicate with anyone outside your group about this case, nor may you conduct any research. You have all the evidence you're going to get in this case, and it would be improper to supplement it with any outside information. And to assist you in complying with these instructions, Deputy Gordon will be collecting all your electronic devices, including Apple Watches, while you deliberate. You'll get them back when you're done, but while you're deliberating, they'll be in a little box in my office making lots of noise. They'll be away from you. Going forward, should you need to communicate with me for any reason, it must be in writing. If it's a question, write it down. If it's a concern, it's a comment, write it down. Deputy Gordon will collect that note. He will share it with me. I will share it with the lawyers and I will respond to you in whatever the law allows me to do. And I add that caveat because oftentimes you've got a great question and my answer is you need to figure that out. If you say, hey, could you remind us what a witness said? I will say, you'll have to rely on your collective recollections. You've been listening, you've been taking notes and you all will be um, as a group deciding what the testimony was. Um, we don't have playback of testimony. We do play back videos. You will not have the videos back there with you. You will have all the photos, all the paper evidence that was admitted that should go back to the jury will go back to the jury. If you want to watch a video again, that's one of the things you'd write down. We'd like to see exhibit X or the video that showed such and such. We'll bring you back out here and we'll figure out how to play it and you'll play it. You get to listen to it and then go back and deliberate. Those are the kinds of things that you would write down. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes my charge to you all. Um, in a moment, you're going to go back to the jury room um, and Deputy Gordon will collect your stuff. We will get lunch to you as soon as lunch gets here. Um, I need 12 of you to go back to the jury room. I need me one second. Um, Ms. Bowman and Ms. Rudd, you stay here and the other 12 go back to the jury room. Please do not start your deliberations until you get the verdict forms, the indictment, the jury charge, and all the evidence that you're going to get. You can get settled in. As I said, lunch will be flowing your way, but deliberations don't start until Deputy Gordon brings you this box full of all the evidence. Okay. Any logistical questions before you go back there? We'll see you in a little bit. Is Ms. Red coming back? Yes, Ms. Red. Okay. Can you turn the podium camera around again? The jury camera went off in the middle of the closing, unfortunately. And the only way to reconnect it was to climb into the jury box. Um, I just, I don't, so then we were stuck. Everyone was looking at poor Mr. Pittman. So just want a different angle. There we go. We got you. Thanks.
Yes, ma'am. This is going to be real quick. I, I wish Ms. Rudd had stayed here, um, but she made her own decision. Um, so we'll get her back in here right away. I don't mean to keep you waiting, but uh, you'll get to use the restroom in just a moment. I just, if you go, then she's going to come back and thanks. All right, Ms. Rivers, you ready? You two are our alternate jurors. Um, you were here, one, because we needed all the jurors we could get, but two, in case we lost jurors during the course of the trial, you would not have known it, but you would have slid into the non-alternate role. We're not done yet, um, and we may yet lose a juror for whatever reason. If we need to excuse someone, then one of you would join that group. If we need to excuse two people, two of you would join that group, but we decided the lawyers and I, that we ought to have two alternates given how long this trial was. Um, I'm impressed we lost no jurors. We actually almost lost one juror at the beginning, but we got everyone here. Um, so um, while they are deliberating, you're gonna be in another jury room. You can keep your electronic devices. You will get lunch. When the food gets here, you can go get what you wanna eat from it, but you can't be in the room while they deliberate. We need you to remain in your information bubble though, um, while you're using your electronic devices or napping or working or whatever you wanna do in that other jury room, please don't do any research about the case. If we need to um, remove a juror, we will be putting one of you in that group and you can't come in there saying, hey, guess what I learned while I researched all this stuff since um, I wasn't back there with you all deliberating. I promise um, that when uh, we wrap things up, whether they get a verdict or not a verdict or whatever occurs, you'll be looped in on that. If for some reason this group does not reach a verdict today and they need to come back tomorrow, we'll talk before the day is out to figure out how close you can be. So you could go about your business. If you say, you know what, with 30 minutes notice, I could be here, then you don't need to be here tomorrow morning. You just need to have your phone on you so that if an emergency arose, you could be down here quickly enough. But if your answer is like, it takes me 90 minutes to get here, then you'll come back um, with your colleagues. If they come back tomorrow, I have no idea what they're gonna do. Um, so that is the plan. Um, you both can go into the jury room to collect your stuff. And then Deputy Gordon will get you into that other jury room. When lunch arrives, we'll take an initial break from their deliberation so you can get your share of lunch as well. And then we'll have you go back into that jury room. That jury room has restrooms also. Um, so you should be able to take care of all your needs. And if you need a deputy in the same way that you bugged them there, you can just poke your head out and they will help you out because one of them will always be in here. Any questions about that? No? Great. So if you have things in the jury room, grab those and head to that other jury room, please. The instructions you gave them, I'm, I'm good with, but you told them not to do any research. Could you also please instruct them not to discuss the case between the two of them? Sure. That is a good request.
Which one is that? No, I think I fixed that. I when I tendered it, I specifically tendered it as a summary of the voluminous records. And he said yes, that is all of that information is contained in the records that determine. Mr. Rivers, I'm going to give you two things. This goes out with the evidence. It's the charge and the verdict forms and the indictment. That should go on the top. And then this is the 60 juror cards. That should be Courts Exhibit 1. Yes. Can you two pause for one second? I need to get one thing on the record I forgot to tell you. I'll let Ms. Rivers get us back on the record. Um, no outside research also, and this may seem counterintuitive, don't talk about the case because that would be kind of deliberating. And if you're going to be deliberating, it'll be if you join that group. Again, when the trial is over, you talk to anyone. You can never talk about it again. That'll be 100% your choice. But the two of you should not have many deliberations. Hey, what would you have done? Anything like that. Talk about anything else you want, but not about the case while you're back there. Any questions? Nope. Thank you so much. Can you please each write a phone number on here? So I get three phone numbers, one for the state and one for each defense attorney if we need to get you back here because you're not here when something comes up. Okay. Mr. Hiles, you and Ms. Olivier will work with the defense attorneys to see what goes back. I don't think there's a dispute. I just think it's the thoroughness of making sure you pull out what doesn't. I agree. Okay. So what we're saying about USBs? Well, let me get those phone numbers because then I can get out of here.
ashes here. Not just a bunch of letter jobs, but
<laughs> Ms. Willingham, can you check to see if Deputy Gordon is in his office right there, please? Oh, okay. Oh, he may be getting inmates. Got it. Okay. I've got several reminders. Right. So, counsel, I think we can at least let the jury get, we'll get this on the record when your clients are out here. Um, the question was, can we highlight or mark up the indictment and the jury charge? The answer is, of course, but why not get you copies? So I have two copies of the indictment, two copies of the jury charge, um, and uh, I'm going to go give them to them and say, yes, they can. I don't have a deputy right now. Any, we'll get this all on the record. Any objection to that, Mr. Brown? Okay. Mr. Hoover, Mr. Childs. Okay. All right. Stay where you are. Is Ms. Wood appearing virtually? She'll be here because we got to do Mr. Ruddock first. Um, there are issues back there. Um, we're going to handle the jury question and then um, the jurors were very appreciative. Judge, I sent you a text about Ms. Wood. All right, Ms. Rivers, you ready? Let's get on the record in Sanders and Pittman. Um, the jury had a question. It reads, can we highlight the jury charge and indictment? Copies. Also take notes. Can we highlight the jury charge and indictment? Copies. Also take notes. Um, Mr. Pittman and Mr. Sanders, I discussed this with your lawyers before we could bring you out here because we didn't have um, our deputies. They were doing something different. Um, and I believe everyone agreed, we'll confirm this on the record, um, that it was okay for me to deliver to the jury two copies of the indictment, two copies of the jury charge and share with them the instruction that they can do whatever they want with those two copies. And so I actually watched them take the indictment that you all had signed, put it to the side and the jury charge that they originally got, put it to the side. And they now have two sets of each I told them if they need more copies to let us know. Mr. Hiles, any concern with the way in which I manage that question? No concern, Your Honor. Mr. Hoover? 
Your Honor. All right. And Mr. Brown. All right. That's where we are. Um, it smelled like a pizza factory back there, but they're working. Um, and we'll wait till they have their next question or something beyond a question. Um, and we will bring both of you out anytime there's any discussion substantively uh, about the case. Um, did we make sure that the alternates got pizza also? Good. Thank you. All right. Um, then we're going to turn to our other calendars because it's two. Ms. Wood will be here. She got stuck in traffic. So we will do Ruddock as soon as we can. Uh, but why don't we try to knock out some of this other stuff? Um, so we had a calendar from 9 a.m. this morning, a plea and arraignment calendar. Um, Ms. Nix, I'm going to go through the plea and arraignment calendar, make sure you've got the same entries that I do. And Ms. Feely, if you'll kind of cover for the PD's office. Um, position one got transferred to Judge Leffridge. Um, so I don't think Brandon White is here, but if he was, you were just being traffic cop this morning. Or at all. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Um, well, he will be next door. Um, Corey Gross. Um, there's been a waiver filed, so we'll get a, a of arraignment filed, so we'll get a scheduling order. Ms. Griggs is not his lawyer. It's someone named Thurston Lopes or Lopez. Is that your case, Ms. Willingham? No, that is going to be Ms. Clark. Ms. Clark. Okay, got it. Anyway, we're not we're not to deal with it today. Um, position three, Alonzo Miller. Um, there was a waiver filed, so we'll get a scheduling order. I think that'll be Mr. Hiles's case. No rest for the weary. Um, position four had to be reset. Ms. Hanholt is in custody in Cherokee County, um, and we'll get her here. Is Princeton Hines, is that a colleague of yours? It's a cool name. Um, Divinity Rivera, um, Ms. Wood filed a waiver, um, so we'll get a scheduling order for Ms. Rivera. Um, and then we've got some probation revocations, um, and we'll talk about those um, uh, Next, if um, there's time before Ms. Wood gets here. Then we had a status conference calendar um, at nine. The first was um, Mr. Bell. Um, and uh, I think we needed to hear, oh, this is a whole case. Um, I have no idea what we're doing on this one. Did Mr. Bell um, 
Ms. Feely, do you have this case now? Do you know who would have it on the defense side? Okay, let's wait for her then. Um, how about Mr. Slaughter? Um, Ms. Nix, did you hear anything um, from Ms. Levine? We exchanged emails a week or two ago. Um, we We're waiting to take his plea, I think. I mean, we have continued him from a trial calendar because he needed to get sentenced federally or plea federally. My understanding was that he had pled already, but he had not been sentenced. Hmm. There were some co-defendants that they were sentencing first. And so that's why it was taking a little bit longer. Um, I did email his attorney um, on the first, and she responded that she was waiting to hear back from his federal attorney. And I was lost to her. So. All right. Well, she owes us a, a report, so maybe we'll bug her this afternoon. Then we have a two o'clock calendar. We're not late for that one. Um, we'll deal with position one in just a minute. Um, we can't do <laughs> position two. Um, how about Mr. Hairston? I think Ms. Miller is on the call. Let's get her. We've got Mr. Abate. Let's... Oh, it's Ms. Willingham. All right, hold on one second. Let's um, get, there's Ms. Miller. And um, can you turn your camera on? Mr. Hiles was camera shy, so that wasn't on. If you just pop it up. Just push some, there, look at that. And then let's remove this one. All right. Um, and, and if you'll turn the, the screen a little bit towards you. And Ms. Miller, I think you just filed a continuance or something. Um, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Is Mr. Hairston on the call or is he in custody? He's in custody. Um, well, before we bring him out, why don't we talk about what we think we're doing today and then we'll bring him out to get on the record, whatever needs to get on the record. Um, and I, I didn't get a chance to read whatever it was you just filed, Ms. Miller. So why don't you start? Yes, Judge. Uh, good afternoon and, and nice to see you as always. Um, I, I have been in somewhat constant communication with Ms. Willingham um, as we are sort of uh, working our way through what uh, might be a, a fairly uh, complex case, at least from the defense side. Uh, the basis of my motion for continuance, Judge, I would like to lay out, as I've already shared with Ms. Willingham, to the court ex parte because it deals with uh, both some mental health issues that we need to sort out and some funding issues that we potentially need to sort out. Um, we have taken steps in this space, Judge, but um, I, I just have concerns that we're, wherever we go from here uh, needs to be effectively documented. And um, I am, as the court knows, um, a part-time legislator coming off leave, but have been working with uh, this case and Mr. Harrison and at least a licensed clinical social worker, but I think we need a little bit more. Okay. Um, well, we'll get Mr. Harrison out here in a minute. Um, your motion to continue would be um, to not, well, let me say this. Um, today was only final plea. Um, and what I would tend to do if we weren't going to be able to have the final plea discussion right now is say, great, let's preserve Mr. Harrison's final plea rights but get his case onto a trial calendar so we're not losing time, but we'll, we'll preserve those interests. But I'm hearing you say, mm, maybe we shouldn't put this on a trial calendar yet because there needs to be some more work done on the defense side to see what posture ultimately this case is in, um, whether it's even something that could go to trial or should go to trial. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to receive some things ex parte, especially if you've been speaking with Ms. Willingham um, when do you think you'd be in a position to engage on that? Um, I, so my request, Judge, would be to continue the final plea, obviously, to preserve our right to enter into a negotiated plea before the court. We would not be ready for trial as it's set right now on April 17th. Um, my request was going to be for uh, 90 days um, to get us to a final plea date or a status date, whatever the court thinks might be most useful, or we could check in before the 90 days um, and, and let the court sort of know where we stand. I think 
Ms. Willingham gave us some additional discovery. Ms. Willingham will correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure if she was cro crossing the I's or dotting the T's, but I think we got some additional stuff here recently. Of course, we need to put all of those things in the tapestry of, of being ready for a final plea. So that was going to be my request, Your Honor, and I was fully prepared to lay a, a foundation um, on the record uh, ex parte, but I have had some uh, 30,000 foot conversations with Ms. Willingham so that she's aware of sort of what our position is. Okay. Um, are you able to answer whether um, we might have to pause things because um, there are steps you're going to want to take with Mr. Hairston um, where we couldn't move forward anyway because he needs to be consulting with experts or anything like that? Is, yes. is it there or this is more in mitigation that you're trying to gather this i'm just trying to sort out whether it's mitigation or if it's competency judge i i will just tell the court in all candor i i do believe that mr um hairston is um medicated now in the jail consistently and competent um i did not always believe that but i am of that belief right now based on just our interactions I do have some um, concerns about uh, criminal responsibility that just they're flags that I just have to track down. And then of course, uh, what this could potentially be judges really a mitigation investigation based on a well-documented long history of, of mental health, including um, things that rise to the level of um, psychosis. Sure. Okay. Um, well, why don't we bring Mr. Hairston out? He can come to the podium and I'll explain to him what we discussed and that um, you're asking for additional time um, that will um, be something that inures to his benefit. Are you all right with that? I am, Judge. Okay. Can we bring Mr. Hairston out, please? Okay, there is a Robert Woods who's on, and he's welcome to have joined us. Thank you. Yes, he's in, um, so today, I kind of knew that even if this. Um, Miller had to add to a continuous with it being final plea. The state's current offer right now is life. So I let Mr. Woods know that and gave him the option. Sure. Okay. There he is. Can you angle the camera up a little bit, please? Deputy Gordon. Great. Okay. Uh, well, let's go on the record. In Mr. Harrison's case, it's 23 SC 188908. Good afternoon, Mr. Harrison. Good afternoon. Mr. Harrison is present in court. Um, his attorney, Ms. Miller, is appearing virtually. Ms. Willingham, the prosecutor, is also here in court. Mr. Harrison, today we were going to talk more substantively about your case, but Ms. Miller has shared with me um, her request for additional time to work with you um, and to have some colleagues of hers or people that she brings on to the defense team to work with you um, before she, Ms. Miller, your lawyer, is in a position to move the case forward. Um, I generally grant those requests because she wouldn't ask given that you're in jail unless it was important to your defense. Um, what's important to me is that we get this case resolved sooner rather than later. There are serious charges that have been brought against you. We have a family that is grieving and is looking for closure as well. Um, and both of those interests are entitled to um, a trial or a plea or however this is going to resolve sooner rather than later but I need to make sure that Ms. Miller has what she needs to um, either mount a good defense for you if there's a trial or to negotiate um, effectively on your behalf if she's trying to work this case out short of a trial. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is set this out for a couple months to let Ms. Miller work with you and have you work with maybe some people Ms. Miller brings into the mix on the defense side. Then Ms. Miller will be in a better position to report back to me, we're ready for trial or something else. Um, that's a decision she'll make after she's had a chance to do a little more work on this. Um, but my goal is in this calendar year to have either a trial of your case or whatever we're doing short of trial. Um, and Ms. Miller knows that um, she had a, an extended leave for a little while because she wears another important hat besides being your lawyer, which is that she's a legislator. Uh, but that's over. And whatever they were going to pass, they passed. And we'll live with the consequences, um, including not a raise for judges. Um, and um, then we will... Um, make sure we move your case forward, okay? Yes, sir. Ms. Willingham, is there anything that you want to get on the record? All right. And you understand that Ms. Miller may share some things with me. They'll be in writing. They'd be filed under seal if there's something she thinks I need to authorize. Um, and we'll move forward in that way. Um, but my goal is in, in the not-too-distant future to have a status conference um, and um, we'll make sure that's an open court. It's clear that um, uh, the victim's family um, wants to be kept apprised of what's going on. They're entitled to, and that works better than if we're in court. That doesn't mean Ms. Miller can't appear virtually. That's okay, um, but uh, we'll certainly want to get a status update. Yes, Judge. Ms. Miller, anything you want to get on the record? No, Judge, thank you for that summary. Hello, Mr. Hairston. I'd just like to let Mr. Hairston know that I will be there to see him on or before Friday of this okay. week. Okay. All right. So today's Tuesday. So in the next three days, um, Ms. Miller will be out to see you to speak much more candidly about what she's working on. Um, the things that I'm sure she wants to share with you that she shouldn't in this setting, because then the prosecution is going to hear about that. But you two are entitled to have um, confidential communications. Do you have any questions for me? No, you are. Okay. Then um, we'll reset this out. What is this is April, early April, May, June, probably late June-ish um, for a status update. Um, my thought is once um, it's clear that we can get this on a trial calendar, we'll just preserve Mr. Hairston's final plea rights. I don't want us to come to court more times than we need to. And I think once I get the green light from the lawyers that this is trial ready, then it just hits a trial calendar, but we'll preserve the final plea right. So if there is a negotiated resolution, um, Mr. Harrison will have that ability. Okay? Yes, Ron. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Miller. Thank you. I'm not sure, but I'll let you know in a moment. What I wanted to do first was to see if um, the Woods had any questions. You understand why this has taken a little bit longer? Good. Uh, and Ms. Willingham is your source, but since we're in court um, in the same way that I entertain questions from the defendant, um, I would for you if you had any process-based questions. You'll get notice of the next court date, and importantly, Ms. Willingham can let you know, is it one where something big is going to be decided or not big? You are welcome at any and all. There's always a Zoom link. I know how Mr. Woods is plugging in, so you don't need to be here in person. You're always welcome to be here in person. Um, some days will be more momentous than others. And so I just don't want you all to um, build up for, a, oh, nothing happened. If it's a, they'll be important because they'll move the case along. But for an outside observer, it'll be, oh, they, they did just talk to each other and that was it. But it's a conversation that we need to have in court with Mr. Hairston present. Okay. Thanks for being here. All right, Ms. Miller, if you don't have any other cases, you're welcome to enjoy um, what goes on in courtroom 8D, but you're also free to um, get to work on Mr. Harrison's case now that your legislative duties are done. Thank, thank you, Judge. I, I appreciate that. I believe that one of the victim's families on the Zoom had a question. I don't know if the court wanted to address oh, that. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Woods, did you have a question? Oh, it's written. Let me see. Yep. Um, you can either type it. Um, your, your microphone is muted. I don't know how to unmute you. <laughs> um, that happens on your end. But you could type the question um, directly to me or to the whole group if you want. Um, or if you can figure out how to unmute from your end, I promise you, I'm not, I'm not muting you. 
Thank you for catching that, Ms. Miller. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Woods? He, he says he has a question, but he's trying to unmute. If it's for me versus the court, I can talk. Okay. Out. All right. Well, says this Zoom call doesn't allow viewers to unmute. Um, I'll send you an ask to unmute. Um, I'm, I'm not sure about your connection, but other people can mute and unmute. Ms. Miller has muted and unmuted. Um, so we can have Ms. Willingham call you and you can tell her what your question is. And if she can't answer it, she can always relay it to me. Where did you say he's? Okay. Um, did you, is your question for me or for the court? Evaluation. Okay, so, um, and Judge, this actually might be a question that you guys may know better than me. Um, he wants to know typically how long the possible uh, ex parte stuff may take. TBD is the best I can say. Um, Ms. Miller um, may be bringing on board, if she does, folks who work outside the normal channel. Um, and that could be faster. Um, it could be less fast. I'm familiar with the speed when it's the public defender's office, um, which is a very healthy speed, but um, things could move at a different pace um, if it is an outside expert. Um, and I'll have a better sense of that, I think, maybe when Ms. Miller starts filing things, if that's the direction she and Mr. Hairston choose to go. Um, and then you'll be in a better position to answer that good question for Mr. Woods. Okay. But he should understand that nothing is changing during that time. Mr. Hairston will stay exactly where he is. Um, and we'll just work to make sure that Ms. Miller is comfortable that um, Mr. Hairston is in a position to meaningfully participate in a plea or a trial or, or what. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. That's it. Thanks, Ms. Miller. All right. Um, hey, Ms. Wood, how are you? That's okay. Um, Mr. Uh, Deputy Gordon has asked that we do Mr. Ruddick first. Before we bring him out, let's just talk about what's going to happen because it sounds like we need to be precision oriented with Mr. Ruddick. Um, so, did you get an offer that you've been able to talk to him about? Is it resolvable or what do you think we're doing? Judge, I spent a good deal of time with him on Friday. I don't think this is resolving today, so I think it is just a final plea hearing. Okay. Um, I have discussed the offer with him, but you may have questions. Okay. So. You okay with him at the podium? Yes. Let's do that. So if you two would get to the podium. Ms. Levine, we'll do Mr. Slaughter right after we do this. Thank you, Your Honor. Hey, Mr. Ruddick. It is indeed. If I could get you to come right up there to the podium. Right there. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's get on the record, please. In 21 SC 179783, it's State versus Ruddick. Mr. Ruddick is charged with aggravated assault and simple battery. 
And Mr. Ruddock, what we're doing today is having a conversation about what we call final plea. It's the last chance for you to enter a plea, if you're interested in entering a plea, when you would have the ability to withdraw that plea if the sentence I gave you was greater than, more than what Ms. Wood asked for on your behalf. What I need to find out first is what the state's offer is, and then I'm going to ask you a few questions, okay? Ms. Nix, what would the state be recommending if Mr. Ruddock went forward with the plea today? Judge, the state's offer, which expires today, uh, was as to count one, a 10-year sentence that he served 18 months with the balance probated, and as to count two, 12 months to serve concurrent. All right. And Ms. Wood, how much time has Mr. Ruddock been in all told on this case? Judge, I do apologize. I believe there's a bit of time from 2021 that I don't have in front of me. But is it close to 18 months or it's far short of that? I think it's closer to six months. Thank you. Okay. Okay. That's all I wanted to understand. It doesn't need to be precise. Um, well, hold on one second. Um, so what I understand, Mr. Ruddick, is that if you decided to enter a plea today, um, the prosecution would recommend um, that you serve 18 months in jail. You'd get credit for all the time you've already served in connection with this case. So, so more than six months. Okay, so maybe it's nine months. You would get credit for all of it. I've been in jail since March 13, 2023. Okay. Um, well, then you might be real close to 18. I, I don't know those numbers. They're knowable, and I could look them up. But what I'm telling you is you'd get credit for all the time that you've been in. And if it's not quite 18 months, then you might have a little more to serve. This is a parolable offense. So I don't know. You might not serve much more time and you'd be on probation for a while. I just need to make sure you understand what the state's recommendation is. Do you think you understand it? I understand it. Okay. Um, today, if you entered a plea, if I sentence you to more than what Ms. Wood asked for, maybe she, I'm making this up, but she might say, nope, 12 months, Judge. We think you should sentence him to 12 months to serve. And I disagreed and I sentenced you to 15. That's more than 12. You could withdraw your plea. It's not what I asked for. No, thank you, Judge. I will wait where I am for trial. After today, you can still enter a plea. The state may make the same offer. They may make you a better offer, different offer. I don't know. I don't control that. You just don't get a back out of it if you're unhappy with the sentence that I impose. Understand? Yeah. Okay. So um, one more question for Ms. Wood and then final question for you, Mr. Ruddick. And then if you've got any questions, it's your turn. Ms. Wood, do you feel like you've got all the discovery in the case? Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Ruddick, are you interested in going forward with a plea today? Oh, no, I am not. Okay. Now, do you have any questions for me? Because let me add this. Your case then will go on the next available trial calendar. Because if you don't want a plea, then the state needs to do its job of proving up your charges beyond a reasonable doubt to a jury of 12. And that will be your next stop. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Uh, well, first of all. Um, well, first of all, sounds like a long list. How many things you got for me? I need to have. I need to get clarity on the time I've been. I've, I've been incarcerated on this charge. Okay. Since uh, March the thirteenth. I'm gonna look it up. What else do you got while I'm looking it up? Um, as far as what do you mean? What else do I have? Well, because I asked you if you had any questions, and you said first of all. That yeah. says to me there's yeah, a second. There is a second. So tell me two. Second, second of all, uh, secondly, the charge of simple battery, uh, there is no um, uh, statement. There is no written statement. So I'm going to interrupt you. I know that's not polite, and your mom and my mom would be disappointed in me, but this isn't the right forum to get into are they good charges or bad charges. If the charges are weak, you and Ms. Wood are going to say, so we shouldn't plead to it, or you better give us a good deal, or let's go to trial. Um, but I, I can't get in the middle and say, oh, man, now that you've told me that, Ms. Nix, you got to throw that charge out. I, that's not my role. Um, if it goes to trial and the state doesn't meet its burden, then I can either do a directed verdict or the jury will say the state didn't prove that charge. But right now, you might, for all the right reasons, think that the simple battery charge has no substance to it. That's not what we work through today. What we're working through today is, do you want to resolve it by way of a plea? You've told me no. And then that means we're going to get you to trial as soon as we can. So that was number two. I haven't forgotten about number one. I'm still looking. Do you have a number three or those were the two things? 
Um, there's definitely more. Um, All right. Uh, I'll give you two more. Uh, oh, I have an answer. Um, you have a credit date of December 22nd, 2023. That's the time I arrived here. Okay. Right? Where were you before? I was in New York um, awaiting extradition. They, they For these charges? These charges. There was not a writ. There was no writ of habeas corpus holding me in New York. You stayed for nine months in New York? New York for nine months, right? The case is in federal court right now in regards to uh, uh, be, being extradited on, um, because apparently, I don't know if Georgia or New York thought that there was a, uh, a writ of habeas corpus giving me a stay on extradition, thus, you know, uh, uh, basically a stay, that means the, the, the days past the uh, Uniform Criminal Extradition Act yep. had stopped. Okay. Right? So basically, I um, got a warrant signed in Georgia on May 11th by governor here, and the warrant in New York, uh, state warrant, uh, extradition warrant was signed by Governor of New York on June the 5th. So how could you be held way back in March if these things were signed then? Well, I was arrested in, in March. On what charges? On, on uh, 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 an assault charge. Okay, right? but something in New York. The charge was dismissed okay. in April. Got it. Right? So and then you were stuck because of the extradition process. Because of the extradition process. The, the state of Georgia uh, never came to pick me up, right? Um, How'd you get down here? Uh, because apparently the judge in New York, uh, when they realized that I've been in jail for so long, right, uh, apparently decided to contact the Fulton County to get me out of there. Okay. Right? Because uh, they wanted to rush me out of there before my case was, case was heard in federal court. Right. So let me let me pause you now. Um, uh, I see the December 22nd date. It looks like there are an additional 54 days from when you were originally arrested on these charges. And there may be a bunch of days in between. What you and you're going to need to help Ms. Wood to do is document if she can show that you were in New York being held on an extradition warrant. You get credit for that time, too. Um Okay, I'm not doubting you, but unfortunately, we got to see the paper. Transcripts. Good. Well, and that's how you need to work together with Ms. Wood on that. But what I'm going to do is get you onto a trial calendar. That doesn't mean you have to have a trial because it may be that if you're able to help Ms. Wood get this documentation and she gets together with Ms. Nix, Ms. Nix says, all right, I'll do the 18 months and we do the math and look at that, you're done. Um, I don't know. I don't get in the middle of those things. I just keep moving the case forward. And that means getting you onto a trial calendar. And oh, you are on the trial calendar. You're on the trial calendar. <laughs> it's just in, in eight days. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, well, obviously, I'm not going to, I, I wouldn't be going to trial in eight days, because I'm not ready to go. To tr I wouldn't be ready to go to trial because I have to know everything about my case and how my case is going to be heard. Okay. Before I go to trial. Well, right? um, I'm gonna let you and Ms. Wood. Satisfied, then I'm going to have to uh, make the adjustments that I need to make. Okay. Right? So, so two things, and then we're going to have to wrap it up. One, um, I encourage you to embrace your lawyer's services. You have a very good defense attorney. That is not your profession. You may know more about your case because you lived it, but what you don't know more about is the ins and outs of a felony criminal trial. Yes, I know that. Okay. What, I, what I'm concerned with, though, is the fact that Your Honor is unaware of the time and the process that it took to get me here, right? So um, that may be something that you and Ms. Wood focus on. I want to alert you that if you end up going to trial, the jury is going to hear zero, nothing, none about the time it took you to get here. I'm not talking about if, if, I, if, if I'm... If, 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 if there's a situation, like I, I know what is what I know what I'm up against, right? Okay. So if there's a situation, you know what I mean? Obviously, I would be looking into uh, doing everything that I can do to make sure that it is proven in court that I'm innocent. 
Okay. That, that I'm not guilty of these charges. All right. Right? Because, uh, so I don't expect to be standing in court trying to prove to these people that uh, uh, I'm not guilty when everybody <laughs> hates the um, uh, defendant lawyer. Like, I, that, 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 would not, that would not happen. That's, that's not wise. What, that's not what I'm planning on doing. Right, but 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 what I am saying is the credit. What I'm not even if I was to be given all the time and be like, okay, you can be released and just get this behind you, because trust me, I I, I feel that I've been in jail for 14 months. Yep. Right. In in in, in this regard, um, uh, but. I'm going to need, uh, obviously, so the, the, the time to get the transcripts. I don't know how. The transcript has to get to you, to my attorney. I don't know the, the process. So I would like you to help me as far as to understand the process on how you guys will get the transcripts. Okay. Um, well, let me ask Ms. Wood a question, um, and, and then uh, I think we've got to wrap up for today. Ms. Wood, have you had any success in trying to document or confirm that at some point up in New York, Mr. Reddick was being held on our charges as opposed to whatever the original New York arrest was all about? Because that's what I'm hearing from him, and he wants to be able to um, document effectively the start date of Georgia time up in um, New York. I understand why that's important to him. Yes, Judge. I will have my investigator get right on that. Okay, good. Um, Mr. Ruddick, you need to understand that I'm going to keep separate in my head your desire to document that time and Ms. Wood's readiness to defend you on the Georgia charges. Those are separate things, as I know you know. Um, but you seem very laser focused on, I need to get that transcript from New York and I understand why you want it. But if you don't have that on the 17th, that doesn't mean we can't go forward with your trial because it's not part of your trial. Indeed. Yet at the same time, I don't even have my trial clothing, right? I don't want any trial clothing from the courts, right? Right. I don't, I don't, I don't like you guys got to um, bring this trial. You want to bring this trial? Okay, but I have a right to be prepared for trial. Okay. Right. So though that though you guys are ready to, to take me to trial, within my, my constitutional rights to due process, I have a right to prepare for, for trial. And I and, and I and I feel that I'm being rushed. Okay. I don't want you to feel rushed. And and when we call the trial calendar, we'll have another discussion about preparedness. Um, I just want to alert you that if the reason why you're feeling not prepared is because you don't have the clothes that you want. Um, the fix for that is you wear clothes that you don't want, but you're just not wearing that blue jumpsuit. So that's not going to be a reason not to go to trial. It has to be a reason because that, 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 that closes the clothing is just a small, uh, this is the clothing is the tip of the iceberg. Okay. I do not even know the, um, the, 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 the defense strategy, right? I, I know nothing about what's happening. Okay. Right. I, I've spoken to my attorney, right? So what I know is what I've spoken to my attorney about, right? But as far as any type of strategy to make me feel confident to move forward, right? I don't and and I and I think I'm placing my life in the hands of of strangers, right? When I'm not going to do that. Okay, right? and I have every right to refuse until I'm able to, to, to. You certainly have more ability to say we're not ready. Let's not go forward than the prosecutor does. I'll tell you that because you're the one sitting in jail and no one else. And if you're saying I don't mind another month at Rice Street while I get more ready, um, I hear you. But we'll cross that bridge on the 17th when we call the calendar. That's not your trial date. That's just the calendar call. And so that'll be a whole other opportunity to tell me more about the iceberg I'm not seeing. Between now and then, um, it may well be that Ms. Wood engages in some confidence building measures with you to help you understand her approach to the case. 
Um, I'm not taking anyone's word as final right now, other than that you said no thank you to a plea. And Ms. Nix has said the state's offer expires today. They may give you a new offer. It may be better, may be worse. I'll hear about that on the 17th when we call the trial calendar. But again, that's not the trial date. That's just when we call the calendar and we'll pick up where we left off. Okay. Also, may I speak to my attorney? Yes, you sure can. Um, I'm going to have Deputy Gordon take you back there. And then I think we're going to pivot to a case that's not her. So she may have a minute to talk with you. Otherwise, I know she spends probably more time than she wants to out at the county jail, um, spending time with her clients, of which you are one. And so that'll happen if it doesn't happen today. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. All right. Um, huh. Let's talk about Mr. Slaughter's case. So we're bouncing back to the status conference. We don't need to get this on the record. We'll get um, his lawyer on. There she is. And Mr. Slaughter on. Um, and let's get the prosecution on. There we go. We're sort of splitting the prosecutors there. All right. Um, Ms. Levine, we had paused things because I believe what you told me was Mr. Slaughter has federal business in, I think it's Missouri, it's not in Georgia, um, and other people were going to be sentenced. He had pled, hadn't been sentenced, and the request was, could we go last? Um, and I would like an update on what last means. Yes, Your Honor. Um, so he has a federal case in Arkansas. He has Arkansas. pled. Um, the PSR has been filed. It's ready to go. I, I have been in close contact with his attorney out there who's informed me that unlike in the Northern District where you get a sentencing date like months in advance here, um, he said that any day they should get a sentencing date and it won't be very and it won't be months from now. It should be like within a month. Um, and really, they're just sitting around waiting but, you know, he did his interview. He's got the PSR. They filed everything they need to file. Um, so we are still waiting on that. I believe the state and I have had fruitful discussions and I'm happy to talk more details with them at a later time. Um, but again, just to reiterate that we are going to um, come to a resolution in this case. I just would ask that we push this back 30 days and we might not even need that much. It seems like yep. this is that will basically be any day they'll announce the sentencing date and it should be soon. Can you share with me what the um, PSR recommends in terms of sentencing ranges? Um, yes. what, um, what is it? He is looking at most likely probation. Um, so that is, that's really our big concern here is that if he takes a plea here, then, you know, that will be blown up in that case. Um, I think that's what you had said before is that it's likely a supervised release sentence federally, um, which will make it easier for Mr. Slaughter to get here um, for his plea and sentencing, which will happen at the same time in the good state yeah. way. Um, okay, then why don't we bump this a month um, and do what we did now? We just won't make you come back at two. If we have it at nine, we'll do it at nine. We're just, I got stuck in a trial. Um, so I don't have that date, but Ms. Nelson will get the calendar published far enough in advance and a virtual check-in is fine for Mr. Slaughter. Um, uh, and we'll see um, if we got the results. Obviously, if you get them in two weeks, reach out to Ms. Nix as well as um, Ms. Nelson, and then we can cancel the inquiry or status conference and, and put it down for, um, I don't remember if, if, my thought is we put it on a trial calendar, it doesn't really matter. We'll put it on for a plea to occur. Um, and uh, we'll be thoughtful about the scheduling since Mr. Slaughter will need to be here for that. That sounds great. And I will definitely reach out if we hear something sooner than the next inquiry calendar. All right, Ms. Nix, does that work for you? Yes, sir. All right, any questions, Mr. Slaughter? No, sir. Okay. Um, then, like I said, we'll set it out to um, mid 
May or later um, to get an update. All right. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. You bet. Bye bye. May we be excused? Yes. Okay. Have a good one. Um, Ms. Wood, do you have the Bell case position one on that status conference? You know, that's who it is. I think it is. Ms. Nelson said, this is the guy who wants to go out of town for work or something. Um, and he may well have been here at nine this morning. Mr. Abate was playing master of ceremonies then. I don't know if he saw him. He saw a couple of the other people. Okay. So I don't know. I'm happy to talk to him. I just remember the last time we were having sort of trying to do it himself. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, if he if he comes in, I feel bad that we had to switch the times up. I don't I don't have anything more on it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, well, let's go back to final plea. Um, Raven Childs. She has been online. Ms. Childs, if you'll turn your camera on. All right. Um, are you going to go to the, you don't have to go to the podium. You can oh, sorry. be there, whatever works. Okay, great. Um, Wow, what are you in a? Tr are you driving or are you just a passenger? Oh no, I'm not driving today. I'm just in the cook. Okay, it looks like you're working for FedEx. All right, um, Ms. Wood, um, what are we doing today with Ms. Childs? Just a final plea hearing. Just a final plea and delivering packages. All right, um, Ms. Nix, what is the state's offer in this theft by taking case? Uh. Judge, the, the, um, Ms. Wood and I were in discussions about either adult diversion or first offender probation. We hadn't really discussed any particular time, uh, but uh, the, the main concern here is, is repaying the restitution. What's the amount? It is approximately uh, $60,000. Six zero? Yes, sir. What was taken? Uh, Allegedly. Cash. Cash. Just there's a bag of cash somewhere? Uh, the defendant was an employee of Brinks. Oh, I remember this case. Sellers. Right, right. Okay. Um, we would need a pretty long window in or a period of time to pay all that back. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so, Ms. Wood, I'm not quite sure what dialogue we should have because Ms. Nix said maybe it's diversion, maybe it's first offender. The focus is the restitution. Tell me um, what, where, where there's a, a, a hang up. I mean, it could be because you got the wrong person. I'm not asking you to share your defense. I'm just not sure how to engage Ms. Childs on this. Yes, Judge. So I um, had reached out to Ms. Nix. I was trying to confirm that we have all of discovery in this case. Um, and I, I, I will double check. I think she said that everything is complete. Um, but at this time, Ms. Childs maintains her innocence. Okay. So, Ms. Childs, um, if you were interested in resolving the case now, and it sounds like other than by way of a trial, um, the, the state is kind of vacillating between maybe it's a diversion sentence, which actually isn't a plea at all. It's just a, some time for you to meet some conditions. Or it would be a first offender plea, which means you'd be under a sentence, but it's without any conviction. Um, it just gives you time um, to, to deal with this restitution. Um, and your lawyer, Ms. Wood, is saying Ms. Childs is not interested in either of those because this isn't something that she was wrapped up in. At least that's the position that you're taking right now. Is that a fair summary? Yes, Pardon me? I'm having trouble hearing you. Can you hear me? Now I can. Yes, ma'am. Yes, um, that's correct what she said. Okay, all right. Um, then what we'll do is move, is Miss Childs on the 17th also? I don't believe so, Judge. No, sir, I think she's on the 30th. 
Yeah, she's on the 30th. Okay. All right. So, Ms. Childs, I'm going to move your case to a trial calendar. That doesn't mean necessarily that you'll have a trial. Um, Ms. Wood is going to continue to be working on your behalf, um, and there may be some middle ground where everyone meets. But this is long. This is old, old. You were arrested in January of 21. Um, so it's time to um, put this behind you and, and if appropriate, help um, reimburse Brinks and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I will see you in court, not on a FedEx truck, but actually in court um, when we call the trial calendar. Uh, when you say the 30th, there is not a... May, May 30th. Oh, that's a day we call a calendar. That's what's on the scheduling order. It is. Look at that. All right. We'll see you on May 30th. So a little ways away. Lots of time for people to work on your case. And you'll get something in the mail. And Ms. Wood will be bugging you about it. But you'll need to be here in court on the 30th when we call that trial calendar. Okay, Ms. Childs? Okay. Thank you. Any questions? No, sir. Anything else, Ms. Wood? No, Your Honor. Thank you. And if you've got any, I mean, you'll double, double check the discovery um, um, because if there's something Ms. Nix needs to get you, I want to make sure it gets there. Yes, Judge. Thank All you. All right. All right. Thanks, everyone. Ms. Childs, you're free to get back to delivering. Thank you. Um, Deshaun Allen. Okay. How about Mr. Hart? I see you both here. Come on up. All right, um, let's get on the record. It's position 523SC190546. Mr. Hart is here in court with his lawyer, Mr. Cobble. We have Ms. Nix as the prosecutor. Mr. Hart's charged with aggravated battery. Mr. Cobble, do you feel like you've got all the discovery in the case? Um, I, there was some, uh, I guess, some, a couple of lay witnesses that I requested the contact or information for or some way to uh, try to reach out to them. Um, but, and I didn't receive any medical records I, that I saw anywhere, but other than that, it seems like we got everything. Okay, but there's not missing surveillance or body camera video uh, that your client may be talking on or anything? Okay, everything. Okay. Uh, Good. My, it sounds like you did. I mean, you've looked through the file um, and you'd have the best sense. Um, and the state, I'm sure, will meet its continuing obligation of updating if they have contact information for folks to help you connect with them. Um, all right. Uh, what Ms. Nix is the state's offer if Mr. Hart wanted to sort his case out today? Okay, the state's offer uh, is uh, five years probation. And um, since that offer was just extended yesterday, uh, it does not expire until the trial call. Okay. In this case, I've been told is also on that May 30th trial calendar. So it's a month and a bit away. Um, Mr. Hart, um, if you were to enter a plea today, the state would recommend a straight probation case of five years probation. Um, Mr. Cobble could argue for fewer years of probation. If I were to sentence you more than what your lawyer asked for, you'd have the ability to withdraw your plea. Um, but if I went along with what he asked for, assuming it was a legal sentence, then you'd be bound by that. The only thing that changes after today is your ability to withdraw that plea. So if you decide two weeks from now, I don't want to go to trial. It's too risky or who knows what. Um, you could always come in and the state's leaving this offer open until the calendar call, um, which is not till May 30th. Um, you just wouldn't be able to withdraw your plea if, I'm making the numbers up, Mr. Cobble said, come on, two years probation is what Mr. Hart needs. And Ms. Nick said, we said we'd recommend five, we recommend five, and I split the difference and say four. That would be your sentence. Today, you can withdraw. After today, you just don't get a withdraw as long as my sentence is a legal sentence. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Cobble, are you and um, Mr. Hart wanting to move forward today, or should we... Um, 
uh, get this on that May 30th trial calendar? Uh, I've communicated uh, the offer to Mr. Hart, and at this point, we're asking for the May 30th uh, calendar. Is that that's calendar call? Or? That's calendar call. So the trial be? I trial think date? that one is a one weeker. Let me look. Um, if we get to May 30th, that is a Thursday. And the trial week is the week of June 10th. Okay. So Monday, June 10th would be when we would call this out. If we reach Mr. Hart's case, um, we'd see you on the 30th. And if he, Mr. Hart, continues to um, want to have his trial, which is your right, then um, he'd need to be here and you for a few days on the 10th. Sounds good. Okay. Ms. Nix, anything else? No, sir. All right, so Mr. Hart, you'll get something in the mail, but you're also hearing me say you need to be here on May 30th for the trial calendar. Yes, All right, thank you both. Thank you, Judge McWeeby. Excuse You may. So Mr. Cook is next. Is he in custody? He pled. All right. Fantastic. In advance of his final plea, um, how about Samuel Manning? Norfolk, Virginia. Norfolk, Virginia. All right, I see him right there. Mr. Manning, can you turn your camera on, please? He did. Thank you, Mr. Manning. And there he is. All right, and Ms. Feely, if you move the camera a little bit, uh, or you can slide over. Oh, I have the wrong one on. That was podium. Your perfect spot right there. There you go. Let's remove that. Okay. And what were you going to add about Mr. Manning? So he is the one that we've discussed before who is in hospice care um, with less than six months of this week. Given that he's out of state, he's in a wheelchair, as the court he's in oxygen. This is really, he's taking this case very seriously. I think you actually brought up the mental today. But um, we're asking the court to just consider putting this out of the calendar instead of a final plea. Okay. Um, you couched the prognosis in past tense terms. Has something changed for Mr. Manning, as in he has a better prognosis now, or it's the same prognosis? Okay. All right. Mr. Manning, are you able to hear us? Yes, I am. Okay, great. I just want to make sure um, you were part of this conversation. Um, so your thought is, let's check in in a few months um, to see how Mr. Manning's doing. Okay. Um, Ms. Nix, I don't know if you're in touch with, there's, there's a victim in this case, if you're in touch with that person, um, any issue with us um, putting this on an inquiry in a, in a couple months? Given where Mr. Manning is, by which I mean both geographically and sort of holistically. Uh, no, sir. All right. Um, and Mr. Manning keeps in touch with you through email, text, email. All right. Mr. Manning, do you have someone who helps you with your communications? Yes, yes, I do. Okay, good. Um, then Ms. Feely will be in touch with you in... 60 days, 45 days or so to let you know when we need you back on Zoom to get an update on what's happening, okay? Yes, sir. All right, I appreciate you joining us. Ms. Feely, um, you're good on the discovery front. This is a much more fundamental, let's see how things are going and is it feasible to do anything um, with Mr. Manning's situation in a few months? Okay, all right. Mr. Manning, um, stay well. And you all are free to sign off. Thank you. Um, how about Antoine Young? She's in custody and that's a plea and I'm ready on it. Okay. Um, same with Matthew Payne. It's, it's workable. Yes. Well, then let's go back to Mr. Allen since he's sitting in here. Judge or do you want more time to talk with him? I just sent Ms. Nixon email. I think we're going to go and not negotiate on that. 
Okay. Um, well, we'll start with him. Let me just see if there was anyone. I think everything from the 9 a.m. calendar that remains is revocations. Um, and and um, I figure we could do the pleas first, but I'm, I'm happy to do it. I don't think we have any other attorneys in the mix. It's everyone here in court. So Ms. Feely um, or Ms. Wood, did you have a preference to do a revocation before a plea? <coughs> I'm happy to do in whatever way. Or if we have, uh, Ms. Willingham is still here. Do you have just one of those cases? I do, Judge. I have um, Mr. Thomas, position nine. For the, for the... Yeah, the aggravated battery? Yes. But this is a, oh, well, this is just an inquiry. What, Correct. Okay. So why don't we do that first, figure out what we're going to do with that. Mr. Bate, you are lingering. Is that just because you feel bad about this whole Carlisle O'Neill thing? Oh, no, not at all. No. <laughs> I have position six. I think it's Ronnie Newkirk. Oh, look at that. Okay. Wow, Tom Robinson. This goes way back. Holy moly. Um, okay. Um, well, why don't we do um, Thomas and then Newkirk, and then um, we'll uh, do a couple, please. Does that work? We'll, we'll do Mr. Allen after that. So before we bring Mr. Thomas out, let me look his case up. I understand what the deal is. Oh, on Manning, um, I didn't think that was still the case. I went in and answered, but I did file the transfer. I guess it didn't get to you. Because this was, it was approved, and I have an email. I was like, maybe I forgot to send it in, but no, I didn't do it. No, so I've just never, it has never actually been filed since with us. Yeah. All right. Is um, Mr. Thomas your case, Ms. Feely? Yeah. All right. Um, let's bring Mr. Thomas out when you're ready, please. You guys fighting over who's going to bring him out? No, I'm just getting the key. Thomas? That's the one that was um, just on for people. We moved it to inquiry in like three months or something because he's going to die soon. And I said, I don't object. So that this gives us some more time to figure this out. And I'm emailing uh, Whitney and copying them. Oh, not Asia Broderick. Oh. Not Asia Broderick. Mm -hmm. How do you spell her name? Asia. Okay, like the country. I mean, like the continent. All right, um, Mr. Thomas. Um, I had you brought out here because you had a court date of. January 4th of this year, um, you didn't appear. I signed a bench warrant. You got picked up on something, whether it was a bench warrant or some other reason. Um, and we got word that you were back. And so now we're working through um, what to do in your case. I don't think there's even been an arraignment. Um, so at a minimum, let's do that. And then why don't you tell me, Ms. Feely, um, what else we might consider today? Yes, I will file a waiver this afternoon, Your Honor. And in terms of the bench warrant, his mother died in July, uh, July 23rd of last year. And he did, that was his mailing address. And he did do a change of address at the post office, but he did not do one for the actual clerk. And unfortunately the mail did not get forwarded. I do have an, his current address in East Point where he can get notices, but um, we're asking for to let the bench warrant. So I've got a Laurel Ridge Way address, your mother's place or your new place? That's my aunt's place. Aunt, is that where you're staying now? Okay, but that's a new address. Yes, my mother was living at the 6320 Kimberly and Mia Road. Okay, I, I don't have that here. I'm going to see where your notice went, and um, then we'll we'll go from there. Because someone up, updated it already. Yes. 
So let's see. What's your lawyer? Tell me what your mom's address was. 6320 Kimberly Mill Road. Okay. And when did she pass? July 23rd of last year. Last year. Okay. And about the house until like September. And you haven't lived at that address since September? No. Okay. But then that other address we were just talking about um, that you say is your aunt's address, that that's where you lay, well, you, where you would be if you get out. It's the mail will be, be here to death. Well, it's two different things. So 2900 Laurel Ridge, there's an apartment number. Um, that's where the mail would go or that's where you're going to be? That's where I'm going. Okay. And the mail could go there too. Yes. Got it. All right. Um, Ms. Willingham, the notice for our plan arraignment that Mr. Thomas missed went to the address for his mother where he wasn't living at the time based on the testimony I just received. Um, so it does seem like it, it didn't get to him. Um, do you have any thoughts about setting aside the bench warrant? Um, judge, the state would object to setting it aside. It's the defendant's responsibility to update his address. Um, but that's it for the state. Okay. All right. What you said is true. Um, however, I will note that this is an incident from October of 2021. And so it may um, have um, reached a point where Mr. Thomas didn't think of letting folks know that he had moved. Um, so I'm going to give you this one, Mr. Thomas. Um, I will set aside the bench warrant. Um, Ms. Feely will file the waiver of arraignment. There'll be a scheduling order entered. Ms. Willingham will get Ms. Feely all the discovery in your case, but you need to make sure you don't miss court again. If you feel like, dang, I haven't heard anything from the court in a while, reach out to Ms. Feely um, because she may say, yeah, we sent you something. Um, and what you need to do if you move, and moving's okay, this is not me telling you don't move, but if you move, you have to update your address because now we've already heard the story once and no one's going to be impressed a second time or, ah, oh, I forgot to tell someone that I moved. That's with the court clerk, right? Wherever she tells you to send it. Okay. But yes, it's the court clerk. I just don't know that address. But it, you can tell the post office all you want. But you got to tell the clerk of court, hey, Jabrail Thomas has a new address. It's 123 Main Street. They'll put it in the system because we don't look you up through the postal service or your attorney. We go into the system that the clerk keeps. And that address now is your aunt's apartment. And so we'll keep shooting things there. Um, if that ends up being not a good address anymore, you got to update it, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Um, anything funky about discovery in this case? No, Judge. All right. I think then, it was ready to be sent at our last setting. Excellent. You just didn't have a defendant. Um, so we'll move this one along. Um, there's some catch up to be done, given that uh, this situation, whatever it may have been, was in October of 2021. Ms. Feely, anything else on behalf of Mr. Thomas? Yeah, yeah. Any questions, Mr. Thomas? No, sir. So you should get out in the next couple of days. If it's Friday and you're still in, reach out to Ms. Feely. I don't know if you've got holds, but assuming you have no other holds, um, I'm getting rid of the one that's keeping you for this case. Um, one last thing. Um, I'm looking at your bond order. You were in for a while, but your bond order was to stay away from an address on Mason Turner, no contact with a Brianna Brown. Make sure you continue to do those things. Yes, sir. So if Ms. Brown is somehow important in your life and she wants to be around you, you need to let Ms. Feely know that so we can modify your bond. Um, if she suddenly calls and says, hey, Jabrell's around me, um, that's going to be a bond problem. And you've used up all your bond problems with this thing. So... Um, just make sure you do that. Um, oh, you have kids with Ms. Brown. Yes, sir. Um, the bond says you need to arrange a third party to um, exchange the children. If it's your turn to be with them, make sure that you're using a friend, an aunt, an uncle, whoever it is. How did you do it before you got locked up? With my mother. Okay. Oh, you can't do that. So you can use your... My niece, uh, she, you know, they got a good relationship. Okay. Meaning your niece has a good relationship with Ms. Brown. Right. Okay. So then do that. Okay. All right. That's it. Thank you. 
And Judge, that concludes my business. May I be excused? Yes, ma'am. Um, let's do um, Mr. Newkirk, please. Mr. Bate, have you and Ms. Feely talked about Mr. Newkirk? No, no, sir. Oh, yeah. Okay. I assumed it was a conviction. It is. So I figured we'd go forward one way or the other, whether we agreed to. <laughs> All right. It's hard to argue with that logic. Okay. Um, let's get on the record. This is position six on our clean arraignment calendar. It's 07 SC 62609, State versus Ronnie Newkirk. Hello, Mr. Newkirk. How you doing, sir? I'm all right. I'm Judge McBurney. I don't know if we've met before. Yes, sir. I don't think so either. Your case predates me. I was not a judge when uh, <laughs> you dealt with this case. Um, but uh, at some point um, on these charges, you were put on probation. I'm going to find out in a minute how much probation remains. Um, but I signed a warrant, a probation warrant for you in December of last year. So about three months ago. And the allegation in that warrant, the two, one is you broke the law. And two is you left Georgia without permission. And the way the state would prove that up, if we have to have a big evidentiary debate about it, is that in July of last year, you pleaded guilty to possession of methamphetamine, maybe a couple other drug offenses in South Carolina, which um, would be both at once. It's you not being in Georgia um, and you committing a new criminal offense. Um, Ms. Feely, um, is Mr. Newkirk admitting to the allegations in the warrant? We are admitting for probation. Okay. Um, Ms. Tucson, good afternoon. How are you? Am I on? You're good on. afternoon. I'm good. How are you? Um, how much I'm well, how much time remains in Mr. Newkirk's case? He has three years, four months, and nineteen days remaining on this case. And um Officer, I believe he was, you were served a petition, right, Mr. Newkirk? He, he tells me he was arrested at the probation no, office. No, no, no. Okay. I was arrested at the probation office. In, in South Carolina? Clayton. In Clayton County. Okay. I don't know. Um, really not here or there. Are there other cases, um, Ms. Tucson, or this is the one case from Georgia for which Mr. Newkirk's on probation? This is the one case for which um, he, the only one, and they stated on here to request to revoke two years and suspend the balance. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. Okay. Mr. Abate, what is the state's recommendation in Mr. Newkirk's case? I had spoken with the probation officer and I had no objection to the revoke two years. Um, as uh, recommended by probation and then to suspend the balance. Okay. Mr. Newkirk, how long have you been in custody? Uh, since about 70 days. Okay. Um, what do you want to share, Ms. Feely? Thank you, Your Honor. So um, Mr. Newkirk was arrested at the probation office. He is only on probation for this Fulton County case, but he was being supervised out of Clayton. So I don't know what the holdup was with um, the warrant, but he 
cooperated, of course. He is reporting. He's working at Travis Tree Company, where he's been for the last six years. He's a machine operator and a crew leader. Um, he has three boys. Two of them are grown and his 17-year-old. Uh, but his 22-year-old son is supposed to be deploying later this month um, for, I believe it is, um, is it Japan? Japan. Um, for a five-year deployment. And he is anxious to be able to see that son. We understand that he did plead guilty to a drug charge out of South Carolina, but we are asking the court I, that for something less than two years on something like this, when he is working and providing for his family and otherwise being law abiding. So we're asking, he has been in for 70 days. So he certainly understands. And I don't want to speak out of turn, but I believe this may be his first issue on probation. Well, that was going to be my next question. Um, Ms. Tucson, are you able to tell in your system if there have been other revocations or write-ups or um, POM events for Mr. Newkirk? I'm checking that now. This is a pretty old case. Um, this is, this is the only warrant I show on this case. So he's never had, um, another revocation. Okay. Um, good afternoon, Ms. Jackson. How are you? Sorry, Judge. I was having problems unmuting and turning the camera on. Can you That's hear all me? Right. You've been a little rusty. I haven't seen you in a bunch of days, so you probably didn't remember which button to press or something. <laughs> How have you been? I'm great. How are you? I'm hanging in there. Um, can you share with me um, Mr. Newkirk's last three cycles? Okay. Let me pull that up, Your Honor. I apologize. It's going to be out of Arkansas. Um, <clears throat> let me just scroll down here, sir. While um, Ms. Jackson, oh, if you're ready, go ahead. No, it was um, November the 5th, 2021, out of Arkansas for possession of controlled substance with the intent to distribute. And I have to go to another um, state um, to get the next two for you, Your Honor. Okay. While you're doing that, Ms. Feely, what do you know about the outcome of the plea in South Carolina? I believe you got a probated sentence, is that right? One year probation. Are you still on probation in South Carolina? Not least in Clayton County. 18 months. Great. Okay. Okay, that appears to be out of South Carolina. There was one July the, the 11th, 2019, out of South Carolina, Aiken County, um, for possession of Schedule 1, 2, or 3 controlled substance with the intent to distribute, and Schedule 2 controlled substance, and Possession of Schedule 1, 2, 3, 
with the intent to distribute. Um, he was convicted on July the 20th, 2023. Um, I'm say something about 18, 18 months to serve. And I'm not sure what the 19 days is for. Um, the sentence is not real clear, um, Your Honor. Okay, we've been talking about that one though. So, so that, but the arrest for that was actually back in 2019. And then more recently there was an arrest in Arkansas that hasn't led to any disposition. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. So, Mr. Newkirk, um, I don't want this case from 2007, whenever it was, to um, be um, holding you back forever. Um, but it does sound like over the last few years, along with working for the tree company, you may have had a side hustle of some sort, or you were working through an addiction that somehow took you out of state to Arkansas and to South Carolina. Um, but uh, I, I, that's a chapter you're going to need to close as well. Um, what I'm going to do in, in how long had you been on probation? I don't know how many years you served. Nine years. Okay. How long did you serve? Nine For years. Nine years. So it was nine plus seven. Was it like a 15 year sentence? About 20. Oh, 20 years. Okay. Which is why you've got some time left. All right. Okay. Um, What I'm going to do, Mr. Newkirk, is revoke one year of your probation and suspend the balance. Um, that will wrap up whatever happened in Arkansas, what did for sure happen in South Carolina. Um, you'll get credit for the time that you've been in, and then um, uh, you will not have any of this stuff hanging over your head. I understand. I didn't ignore the fact that um, you won't see your son before he deploys. That deployment comes too soon anyway, comfortable lowering it more than this. I don't think the state's recommendation was an unreasonable one, um, but I'm trying to strike the right balance of you had a bunch of time that seemed to be um, fairly um, unremarkable on the probation front. I'm not quite sure why the Arkansas arrest didn't bubble up um, on probation, um, but or even the July 2019 arrest didn't bubble up, but clearly the conviction did. Um, and hopefully you're able to move forward from that. Mr. Um, Abate, anything else? No, Your Honor. Ms. Feely? Yeah. No. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, Ms. Wood, should we do Mr. Allen's plea? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Allen, if you want to come on up.
Let me know when you're ready, Ms. Nix. You are ready. Okay. Um, let's do it. This is 23 SC 188954, State versus Deshaun Allen. Mr. Allen's here in court with Ms. Wood. Ms. Nix is here for the state. And Mr. Allen, uh, Ms. Wood tells me you are ready to enter a plea. I think it's a non negotiated plea, which is fine today. Um, if the sentence that I impose is more severe um, or longer than what Ms. Wood asked for, I'll give you and Ms. Wood a chance to talk about whether you want to withdraw your plea. And if you do want to, no questions asked, you get to do that. You may decide, eh, that's not what I want to judge, but I'll take it. But you and Ms. Wood will have a chance to talk about that before you commit. Uh, if I sentence you to what Ms. Wood asked for or anything lower than that, we don't have a conversation about it because you got what you asked for. Does that make sense? Yes, John. All right. Ms. Nix is going to put you under oath. Once you're under oath, please answer her questions and mine truthfully and completely. Ms. Nix. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Allen, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that any statements or testimony that you shall give in the matter currently before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Please state your true, correct, and legal name. Deshaun Jeffrey Kalichi Allen. Please spell your name for the court reporter. D-E-S-H-A-U-N. Jeffrey J-E-F-F-R-U-I. Kalichi K-E-L-E-C-H-I. Last name is Allen. A-L-L-U. Are you at this time taking or under the influence of any medicine, drugs, or alcohol? No, ma'am. Is there a medication that you normally take that you have not taken or been given today? No, ma'am. How old are you? 30. How far have you gone in school? I graduated GD and I um, had a technical college. Is English your native or dominant language? Yes, ma'am. You understand that you've been charged with the following offenses. Count one, aggravated assault. Count two, Possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony and count three, possession of a firearm by convicted felon. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I understand that you have uh, that you have the right to plead either guilty or not guilty to these charges. Yes, ma'am. You understand that if you plead not guilty or remain silent and refuse to enter any plea at all, then the state is required to prove the charges against you at a jury trial. Yes, ma'am. Have you had the opportunity to review your rights with your attorney? Yes, ma'am. Have you had enough time to speak with your attorney about all of the charges in this indictment against you, including the facts and circumstances relating to each charge? Yes, ma'am. Do you need more time to discuss the case with your lawyer, Ms. Wood? No, ma'am. Are you satisfied with her services? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Wood, do you waive a formal reading of the indictment for purposes of the plea? So waived. And do you waive any and all defects in the indictment for purposes of the plea? We do. Mr. Allen, do you remember having been arrested on these charges? Yes, ma'am. Has your attorney advised you of the minimum and maximum sentence for each charge to which you're pleading guilty today? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that today you're entering a non-negotiated plea and that the state may recommend a sentence to the court even without you having agreed to it in advance? Yes, ma'am. Are you aware that the state's offer is approximate is or totals to uh, 10 years to serve one year with the balance probated? I think so. Along with special conditions. So you're just saying that you understand that's what the state offer is. Uh, yes, ma'am. Have you discussed this attorney this offer with your attorney? Yes, ma'am. You understand that the court can impose any sentence authorized by law, including a higher sentence than that recommended by the state, up to the maximum sentence on each charge? Yes, ma'am. You understand that if you enter this non-negotiated plea, uh, and the judge sentences you to at or less than what your attorney recommends that you do not have the right to withdraw your plea? You do today because it's your final plea date. Yes, ma'am. You understand that this is a guilty plea which is permanently recorded on your criminal history? Yes, ma'am. Are you currently on probation or parole anywhere? No, ma'am. You understand that if you are placed on probation of any kind, you cannot violate any criminal laws of any governmental unit? Yes, ma'am. You understand that while you're on probation, you must follow all the special conditions of your probation? Yes, ma'am. You understand that if you fail to follow all the special conditions of your probation, then you will be subject to revocation of that probation for the balance of your sentence? Yes, ma'am. You understand that you are not allowed to possess or use a firearm while on probation? Yes, ma'am. Are you a United States citizen? Yes, ma'am. You understand that by pleading guilty to a felony, you may not receive, possess, or transport a firearm? Yes, ma'am. 
You understand that doing so could result in new criminal charges for which you face a sentence of up to five years? Yes, ma'am. You understand that by pleading guilty to a felony, you may not use a firearm in a crime in the future? Yes, ma'am. You understand that if you were in the future to use a firearm during the commission of a crime, you would face a 15-year custodial sentence consecutive to the sentence for the underlying crime? Yes, ma'am. You understand that by entering a plea of guilty today, you are waiving any and all defenses, including any mental health defenses? Yes, ma'am. You understand that by pleading guilty, you are giving up the following rights, the right to a trial by jury, to remain silent, to confront witnesses against you, to the assistance of counsel, to the presumption of innocence, and the right to appeal if convicted of these charges at trial? Yes, ma'am. Is it your decision to waive these rights and enter a guilty plea today? Yes, ma'am. Has anyone forced, threatened, or promised you anything to get you to enter a guilty plea? No, ma'am. Is it your decision to enter a guilty plea because you are, in fact, guilty? Yes, ma'am. How do you plead to the charges of aggravated assault, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, and possession of a firearm by convicted felon in indictment number 23 SC 188954? Guilty. Is this guilty plea freely and voluntarily given with full knowledge of the charges against you? Yes, ma'am. You understand that you have only a limited right to appeal this guilty plea conviction? Yes, ma'am. You understand that if you wish to challenge the voluntariness of your guilty plea, you must do so by filing a habeas corpus petition. And since these are felonies, you have only four years from today to do so? Yes, ma'am. Judge, had this case gone to trial, the state would expect the evidence to show that on or about May 18th of 2022, um, the defendant pistol whipped uh, the victim uh, is Arsenio Wiggins, A-R-S-E-N-I-O, uh, Wiggins, W-I-G-G-I-N-S. Uh, he did so while in possession of a firearm during the commission of, of the felony of, uh, of pistol whipping Mr. Wiggins. And Mr. Allen is a convicted felon, having been convicted in the Supreme Court of Kings County, New York, for the charge of attempted robbery in um, October 27th, 2015. And that occurred in Fulton County. Judge, at the time of this offense, the defendant had only one prior felony, the one I just mentioned, the attempted robbery. He pled guilty to a fleeing and attempting to elude uh, four months later after this incident. Um, and that was in Florida. And I believe he served some time in Florida. And that was a felony in Florida also? Yes, sir. But that plea was after May of 2022? Yes. The, okay. The plea was after May of 2022. I yeah. don't know the incident date of that Florida case. Okay. And any sense of um, how badly Mr. Wiggins was injured as a result of being hit with the gun? He received some bruising. Um, I think there was a small laceration, but um, he did not seek any medical treatment. Didn't lose his eye or need no, 20 stitches. Okay. But still not a fun event for him. Right. Okay. Thank you. And the state's recommendation in this case was um, as to count one, five-year sentence that the defendant served one year with the balance probated, no contact with Arsenio Wiggins and stay away from the incident location. Uh, complete anger, anger management or complete 40 hours of community service. And count two, the state recommends five years probated consecutive to count one, again, with no contact with Arsenio Wiggins and staying away from the incident location. And as to count three, the state recommends a five-year sentence, serve one year um, concurrent with count one with the balance probated. So for a total of 10 years to serve one. No contact with Wiggins, 40 hours community service, anger management course, anything else? Stay away from the incident location. Oh yeah, and where was that? That was 5555 Roswell Road. Is that a home or a commercial establishment? It Roswell is Road is commercial. Apartment complex. Okay, all right. Um, at the time the, def the victim was working mm -hmm. there, I, I know that I asked him, but I don't remember if he told me that he was still working there. Okay. Thank you. 
Ms. Wood, oh, let me get from Ms. Jackson um, any additional criminal history information. So I heard about two convictions, one from New York and one from Florida. Do you have those or anything else? Those are the only two felony convictions that I have, Your Honor. Okay. And what's the most recent cycle you have? It was November the 8th, 2023 out of Florida for a probation violation. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Ms. Wood. Thank you, Judge. As you know, always there's a, another side to the story. Um, I believe Mr. Allen and Mr. Wiggins knew each other. There was an incident involving a lady, Judge. Um, so there is more to this story. However, Mr. Allen um, wanted to go ahead and take responsibility for this. Um, short of trial, Judge, he just got a job. He works at Habasset, Habasset out in Sewanee. He is a fabrication technician, Judge. He's 30 years old. He does have some college education. Um, he's been very proactive. If you recall, we reset this because he was, he was incarcerated in Florida. He wrote to me, he called me, and then he was very proactive and eager to get this behind him. He's got his life on track, Judge, and he is ready to move forward. Um, we're asking the court to consider a total sentence of 10 years, the first five to be served on probation and the second five to be suspended. Um, there is no issue with a stay away from Mr. Wiggins or the apartment location. He does not live there anymore. Um, so we're just asking the court to consider a sentence of five years probation with the second five suspended. Okay. Mr. Allen, your new job, um, what are your hours? I work from 3 to 12, 3.30 to 12 at night. So you have like the evening shift? Yeah, the, the overnight shift. Overnight shift, almost overnight. So 3.30 to 12. Yeah. I make, okay. I and I you make, said that that's in Suwannee? Yeah, I make conveyor belts for Habitat America. You build conveyor belts? Yeah. Oh, all right. Um, well, congrats on that. How long have you been there? Um, Florida just let me go like two weeks ago. So I've been working there since I got out the last two weeks. How did you get that job so quickly? While I was there, um, they offer programs that uh, help me look into my license. I got a couple of my license tickets paid off and we could um, apply for jobs and things like that. So okay. I, I pre-did everything before I got out. While you were in custody in Florida? Yeah, I got arrested in this courtroom back in October. So I've been in Florida all this time. And what was the basis for your Florida arrest? The reason why they violated me is because I changed my number and I didn't give it to my probation officer by accident. I had a newborn, so I was busy between daycare, working, dealing with my baby mom, trying to get us back on track for my daughter and stuff. Okay. Uh, and how long did you say you were down in Florida? Since October 24th, when... I got locked up in the courtroom. Okay, I don't remember when that was. I'm sure you do. <laughs> um, so November, December, plus four, it's like six months. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Um, and what days of the week do you work from 3.30 to midnight? Monday to Friday. I have Saturday and Sunday. All right. Um, and right now you said you're living in Lithonia? No, I moved. Did I make that up? I have a new address. Can I give it to you? You're going to need to because what we've got here is uh, Camellia Lane in Lithonia. Because I got locked up, my baby mom, she got evicted. So Okay. Are you staying with the mother of your kids now? I'm staying with my aunt. With your aunt? She lives in um, 520 Waterford Place in uh, uh, Sandy Springs. In Sandy Springs. Okay. Um, where is the mother of your child? They had to go back to New York because I was locked up and we had lost everything. Okay. So, and is that your only child? Yes, sir. A boy or a girl? Girl. So she's up there with her mom in New York. You're down here um, staying with your aunt. Okay. All right. They had to go to a shelter because we, it's hard dealing with a newborn. She about to turn three on the 29th. So it was kind of hard with her. Doing, uh, she does armed security. So um, it was the hours. So she went back to me. So three is not quite a newborn. Your kid's now three? <laughs> she turns three at the end of the month. On the okay. 29th. All right. Um, are they coming back down to Georgia or are you trying to get to New York? No, nah, well, I was trying to stay in Georgia, but 
obviously I had to get a job and get myself back on track. And, and then they out. might come back down here. Yeah. Okay. Is your child's mother working now in New York? Yes, sir. Yes, she is, sir. Doing armed security? No, she's a um, debt collector. Okay. But she's still... What does that mean? Um, you know, like when you owe... Um, no, I know, but, but like she shows up with a um, uh, crowbar saying you better pay oh, or... something um, over the phone. Oh. Like office job. Okay. All right. But out here in Georgia, she um, had she was working for Vest Secure in America at like the Kroger's and stuff. And yep. uh, she told them that she had to take some time off. because. Okay. All right. Well, Mr. Allen, I find there's a factual basis for your plea. Um, was the young lady you and Mr. Wiggins were um, disagreeing about, the mother of your kid or a different woman? Or it wasn't about a young lady? I was, I cheated on my baby mom with his um, girlfriend or whatever. The so why didn't he hit you on the head? Or why didn't your girlfriend hit you on the head? They knew I was on probation, Your Honor. So yeah. They could get away with saying anything. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, don't be on probation. Um, and Florida didn't try to revoke you for this? Is this going to be a problem? No, Florida, they um, gave me the max because they wanted me to I explain myself and my situation. What got I it. Going through, so. so they kind of hit you for this as well? Yeah, just so that I don't got to come back down. Okay. All right. Um, well, I'm glad that your kid's mom is still talking to you. Um, I find there's a factual basis for your plea. Um, and that your plea is knowing and voluntary. I'm sentencing you pursuant to the Probation Options Management Act. And all that means is that while you're on probation, if you have a small problem, you and probation will sort that out. But if you get arrested again, you do anything around this Wiggins guy, that comes back to me. Okay. Yes, yeah. Um, Ms. Wood, can someone from my office sign the indictment on your behalf? Yes, Judge. Ms. Nix? Yes, sir. And Mr. Allen, is it okay if we sign your name to the guilty plea? Yes, sir. All right. Um, what I'm going to do on count one is sentence you to five years. Um, and uh, let me check one more thing. Okay. Um, I'm going to sentence you to five years. Um, I will probate that. Count two will be five years. It has to run consecutive to count one. It'll be five years. I will suspend that. And count three will be five years probated concurrent with count one. So it's a total sentence of 10 years, five on probation, followed by five suspended. It will be a special condition of all 10 years that you not violate the law, which means that's already the case. You can't violate the law. But if during that time that you're on a suspended sentence where you don't have to report or anything like that, you get picked up for something, the state could come back and say, mm, we want you judge to reinstate um, Mr. Allen's sentence. So during those final five years, um, you need to make sure you stay out of trouble. Um, it's also a special condition of count one that you complete seven weekends in jail um, here in the county jail. I'll have those weekends start um, on Saturday, April 20th. So not this Saturday, but the following Saturday for seven weekends in a row. You check yourself in at 9 a.m. at Rice Street um, and you'll get out. Um, on Monday at nine, plenty of time to get to work. Um, but those weekends for seven weekends in a row, um, that's part of your probation. Don't miss any of them. If something comes up and you know you got to miss it, my kid's sick, I'm going to New York, you got to talk with your probation officer um, and get the green light and they'll just move that one to the back end. So it still will be seven, but we'll just move one to the back. But you know what? I need to have that start later because I don't know when you're actually going to meet your probation officer. So I'm going to have your weekend start with May 4th. That's the first weekend in May. Um, and this will all be in your sentence. Um, but that Saturday, you get to the county jail by 9 a.m. And did they have a light? Oh, we've been sitting on those? Okay. All right. Um, hold on that. Um, so you um, will need to do those seven weekends starting on May 4th. Um, if for some reason your work schedule changes so that you need to not do Saturday, Sunday, but 
Wednesday, Thursday, let your probation officer know I'm, I'm indifferent as to when you do those blocks of two days. Um, no contact with Mr. Wiggins. Um, you will need to take an anger management course. You do that anytime during those five years. Stay away from those apartments on Roswell Road at 5555 Roswell Road. Um, and um, you are going to need to do 40 hours of community service. You don't have to do those right away, um, but the sooner you knock those out, the better. Lastly, I will set a behavioral incentive date of April 10th of 2027. That's three years from now. If in three years from now, you've done your community service, that shouldn't take very long. You've stayed out of trouble, no issues with Mr. Wiggins, then probation may come off the case sooner. You'll still have that suspended sentence, but you don't need to report or anything like that. Ms. Nix, anything you want to add in Mr. Allen's case? Uh, no, sir. Ms. Wood? No, no, no. Now, Mr. Allen, um, that is effectively the sentence your lawyer asked for. Um, this was serious enough that I didn't think um, there should be zero jail. You didn't do much when you first got arrested. You got a good job. You came back here and got that, you, you lined that job up while you were in custody. And so I don't want to rock that boat, especially if part of this goal of this job is to get your family back together. Um, so I did impose those weekends in jail. I'm going to say that's slightly more punitive than what your lawyer asked for. So you guys should talk to see if you want to go forward with that. Or if you want to say, nope, I'd rather go to trial and we get Mr. Wiggins in here. He's good, Judge. He's good. Okay. Um, Ms. Tucson, what info do you need to get from Mr. Allen so he can start his probation? Can you write all that down? Yeah, yeah. It looks like I did receive um, an email from Ms. Wood. Um, where are you going to be living? Um, Mr. Allen? Right now I'm staying with my aunt. She stays at 520 Waterford Place, but eventually I'll be getting my own apartment. One second, I'm going to turn the volume up a little bit. Could you repeat right. that? And you speak up a little. I said that I'm staying with my aunt right now. She lives at 520 Waterford Place, Atlanta, Georgia, 30342, but eventually I'll be getting my own place. Will you do a change of address form, yes. Ms. Wood, for Mr. Allen, please? Yes. Thank you. 520 Waterford Place in Atlanta? Yes, ma'am. Sandy Springs. Okay. Zip code is 30342. And I have a phone number of 470-877-9493. Is that your direct number? Can you say that again, ma'am? Your number, 470 470- Eight seven seven four nine four nine three. Yes, ma'am. That's my aunt's number. What's her name? Um, Alexander. What was her name? Amina Alexander. Amanda. Amina. A M I N A. I don't know if this said the sounds bad or, and then your number is the seven one eight number. No, that's my grandmother's number. I haven't got paid as yet, so I, I didn't get a phone. 718-485-0658 is your grandmother's number? Yes, her address is 9815 Farragut Road, Brooklyn, New York, 11236. That was my no, I don't need her address. It's okay. Um, You said the other number is 718-485-0658? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what's her name? Cindy James. And that's grandmother. Okay, um, where are you gonna, when are you gonna have access to a phone? When I go home. When I'm here. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so if I call her Miss Alexander and give her my number, I could give her reporting instructions as well? Yes, ma'am. Okay, then I will go ahead and um, give her a call, okay? And just yes, make sure the, re the reporting instructions I do give, um, you do report on that date, okay? Because yes, they have uh, changed um, our intake again, so, okay? Is it possible that you could verify it with my job also so that I don't get in trouble with um, them? 
Yes, I could send you over reporting instructions with the date and time. All right, thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. All right, Mr. Allen, good luck. Judge. Thank you, Aaron. I, I just want to make sure I write it down for him. May the 4th, and what was the time to report to? Right 9 a.m. Okay. They don't even know, like, edit that way, I figured, but mm -hmm. I'm like, what the hell? Okay, yes. Thank you. Mr. Rachelson? Yes, sir. Hey, um, as you can see, we're a little congested. Um, I had a trial from last week that didn't end last week. The jury is deliberating right now. They have a couple questions. Um, and uh, that has caused my criminal calendar from this morning to become my criminal calendar for this afternoon. Um, so uh, I don't know, is Mr. Prater here? He is here. Is that a gentleman who walked in? Okay. All right. All right. So we'll talk. I don't know that we'll be able to have the full-blown hearing to which you're entitled today, um, but I do want us to connect so we can make a plan if we have to do this later this week. I have time if this trial ever ends um, to do that. Um, unless you and Mr. Prater, I'm assuming he remains pro se, um, I don't know if you and he have spoken. Okay, I didn't see him with a laptop. Um, <laughs> oh, maybe he's got a laptop, so maybe he's here to hand it over. Well, there's that plus other issues that, um, that, that he's, he's communicating with our clients. Uh, I understand. I, I understand what we're working through. Um, I just wasn't sure if that was, so that is... I don't know. I, it might be, it might be I didn't look at it. Was the laptop a Hogan construction property or his own laptop? Okay, that makes it easier. Okay, all right. So um, I'm not ignoring you all. Let me figure out what we're doing with the jury. And if that's going to be particularly involved, I don't want to waste your client's money keeping you here. Um, but I also appreciate that this is a time sensitive situation. Um, so, uh, that's why when Mr. Prater's back, we can at least have a little conversation about what needs to not happen between now and whenever we can get you back in here. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Great. All right. Um, we've got questions to view things. Can you reach out to the other lawyers? I know. Or do you not have their contact information? Ms. Nelson, can you please contact Mr. Brown and Mr. Hoover? Thanks. Do you want me to call Hoover too? She'll do it. She said yes. Don't worry. Well, you all can double cover. Um, you all are ready for, you've got two in custody, please. And then we have a couple of revocations. And that's it? Okay, why don't we do your revocation? Um, who is that? Is it um, a contested one? You don't think so? Okay. What about Mr. Presley? The the allegations are new charges. Um, the new charges were dismissed at preliminary hearing due to the officer not hearing. Um, and so I think the best thing for us to do is to withdraw it at this time and then um, have the option to bring it back at a later time if we're able to bring the case back. Um, okay, I understand that. Um, and I mean, it gets Mr. Presley out, but um, maybe it doesn't get him out. Okay. Um, I mean, the fact that the officer didn't show says nothing about the strength of the case. It may be a phenomenal case. You just had an officer who didn't show up. What were the what was the nature of the new charges? Entering auto? <laughs> no, it was an aggravated assault, and 
Um, I have to pull it back up, but I, if memory serves, it was a shooting in the general area. Okay, but nonetheless, a shooting for a convicted felon. Correct. Okay. All right. But either way, I mean, it's your call, not mine. You're going to um, uh, ask that the petition be withdrawn or whatever the term would be. Because you don't want to go forward on charges that a magistrate dismissed. Have you called the officer? You, you can consult with Mr. Hiles. Does it... Was it scheduled for a hearing today? It's scheduled for just like the. I think we should schedule it for a hearing and we need to get the officer in because he's a convicted felon with a gun. I don't trust <laughs> the officer to show. He doesn't work there anymore. Huh? He doesn't work there anymore. So when did the. When did the pre-trial, when did this incident happen? Uh, September. It happened in September. Well, why don't we do Mr. Milner while we're waiting on Mr. Hoover? If we could bring Mr. Milner out, please. Do I need to change these? No, you're good. Um, they do want to see, yes, please, the Goodwill first video of shooting. So... Um, if you'll play IT with everything else. I got it. Hey, Mr. Milner, if you'll come, keep going right up there next to Ms. Feely. The other card says, please provide the USB drive of the images taken from phones, all three. And so I don't know what they want with that, but we'll ask them because you handing them a USB drive is not going to, unless someone has a slot I didn't see in the side of their head, how are they going to do something with a USB drive? Yeah, the USB, they want to use stuff on the thing at the time, but the phones, the the drives contain the full cell side extract. Right. So um, we'll have to discuss that with the four person when they come out to watch the Goodwill first video. Okay. And we actually have the video back there. <clears throat> okay. We'll make sure they'll come out and then one of you, can, well, none of you can go in there. Um, we'll ask them to bring it out. Um, all right. Sorry, Mr. Miller, to keep you. We got a lot of moving parts here. I appreciate your patience. Thanks, sir. Um, we're going to go on the record in your case. This is 11 SC 104638. It's an old, old case. You were convicted of burglary. And um, I guess you're still on probation. Um, Ms. Tucson, can you tell us, please, how much time remains for Mr. Milner? He has two years. 10 months and seven days remaining. Thank you. Mr. Milner, I signed a warrant, a uh, probation warrant. Um, <laughs> a date I don't know because I didn't put the date on it, but it was sworn out by an officer in late November of last year. And the allegation is that in November of last year, you were released from jail and you were supposed to report to probation Within 24 hours, you didn't. Then they went to look for you at the address they had, which was a Headland Drive address in East Point. Couldn't find you. Um, and then they left a letter and a message and couldn't track you down. So it... And something got cut off. Maybe you were supposed to complete something, failed to provide proof of, and they ran out of space. But mostly 
it's what we call absconding, which doesn't mean you went to Texas, but we come find you. And it's really not probation's job to have to run after you. You ought to be where they can find you. And I'm going to hear why in a minute. I don't, I don't want you to worry about it so much other than um, Ms. Feely is Mr. Milner admitting to the allegations of the warrant. We are. Do you know what the other condition was? It, the, the warrant cuts off. Um, it's he failed to report and then it's failed to provide proof of and there's nothing more Judge, um, I, would, I would guess it's an alcohol and drug evaluation at the last revocation hearing um that was added as a special additional special condition got it. to be uh, completed within 30 days of release okay all right so we're talking about technical violations through and through um, Ms. Feely, why don't you tell me about Mr. Milner and what you think we ought to do? Yes, Your Honor. So unfortunately for Mr. Milner, he got sentenced in a time and place that um, does things much differently than we know kind of to do them now. So he got a 20 to do two for a burglary of a recycling center and tools, uh, possession of tools. That's the only underlying um, of, of what he's on probation for. But when he got out, he just didn't get on his feet. He was homeless under a bridge in East Point. Um, his sister does live at that East Point address, though. Um, but he has no new charges. He's not out bothering anybody. He's got doesn't have guns, drugs, anything like that. Um, so we are asking the court. He just got his name run in a traffic stop, and this warrant popped up. So um, we're asking the court to consider the 35 days that he's already served, considering um, no new charges and everything. And um, we're, we're asking to close the probation, honestly. Okay. I'm looking at Judge Carnesale in late October of last year, um, revoked your probation six months, but it was reduced to time served. So you got out. It was based on a new guilty plea you had in a case from 2023. You were supposed to get a drug and alcohol evaluation and obviously report, um, but that that part didn't happen. All right, um, Ms. Nix, what is the state's recommendation? Judge, this is the defendant's fourth revocation. It appears that two were for getting new charges and um, the other two were for technical. I believe that, that one of them, the one in... June of 2018 was for failing to appear to probation and treatment. At that time in 2018, uh, he was revoked in order to serve two years. Um, so uh, we'd ask that uh, you get the same sentence for the, the last failure to report of two years. Okay. For, for doing it again, basically. All right. I'm just looking at what your new-ish case was. This is why Judge Carnesale handled your revocation. You pled in front of her to criminal attempt to commit a felony. I'm not sure what that's all about. And you got two years to serve, reduced to time served. How long had you been in jail? For a while? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Milner, my thought is you've been on probation in this case long enough. I am going to revoke nine months and close this case out. So when you're done with your revocation, um, you don't need to worry about this being over your shoulder anymore. The case you have with Judge Carnesale doesn't involve any probation. Um, Ms. Um, uh, Tucson, does Mr. Milner have any other open cases in Fulton County? No, Judge. Okay. This closes everything we out. I wanted to um, confirm credit for time served from which date? Um, well, let's get that because he certainly gets credit for time served. So if I go back. It's March 6th. Ms. Feely thinks it's March 6th. I don't have any reason to doubt her. I'm just going to see what the system tells me. It works so fast these days. Um, yeah, March 6th. 2024. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, Mr. Milner, um, I wish you the best when you're done with this. You don't need to worry about 
drug and alcohol evaluation or reporting to probation. When you get out, hopefully you connect with your family. And um, if you are, are, are in need of help with any kind of substance abuse or anything like that, I hope you'll get it. Um, but it will be what you choose to do. It won't be people telling you what to do. You are of an age now where you ought to be able to be making some of those decisions on your own, okay? All right, thank you, sir. All right, let's bring the defendants out, please. It's called Goodwill First Video of Shooting. I'll read it in the record. Um, and then they, something about the images of the phones. It's hard to tell what they want. So we're going to ask them when, I'm going to ask them when they come out. All right, Ms. Rivers, are you able to pivot? Okay. We are back on the record in State versus Pittman and Sanders. Ugh, I'm going to stand up. Um, we have two more questions from the jury. One says, request to see Goodwill first video of shooting. The second says, please provide the, and it's in quotes, USB drive of the, and it's in quotes, images taken from phones, all three, and then it lists three phone numbers. One ends in 7446, one ends in 6240, and one ends in 8025. I think those are the three numbers that um, uh, Bilson was mapping, whatnot. Okay. Um, so that's Baker, um, Pittman, and Sanders. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, do you feel like you know, Mr. Hiles, what the Goodwill first video of shooting is? I think I got it queued up. Okay. Is that the one that's the Goodwill camera? Yes, I believe so. Okay. We'll ask them. I mean, they can see any video they want, but we'll see. They can just see from that. Is it queued up as in it's on that? Like if they look at the screen, they'll see, yes, that's the angle we're talking about or what's on the screen right now? Uh, I mean, I, I just have to hit start. Like there's, it's the... The videos on the thumb drive. Okay. I would just, I'd have to double click it to play it and then they can tell me whether or not. Okay. They can tell me. Um, but yes. Um, all right. So we'll figure that out. And then I'm going to ask the four person or I, these cards were written by different people. Um, so maybe the person who, it doesn't matter who wrote it, but someone needs to tell us what they mean about the, um, what they want from the USB drive. Yeah. That's my proposals that work for you, Mr. Hiles. Mr. Hoover. Yes, Your Honor. I'm the phones. I'm a little more confused about the phones. So I don't think you're more confused. I think we're equally confused. Um, and we're going to talk with the jurors to get less confused. I'm not going to give them anything until they tell us what they want. Okay. And then it may be I say thank you. And then we have to talk about what, if anything, they get. Gotcha. Um, I, I don't know if they want it because they want to be able to search the dump. And not, is it also printed out? Uh, I it, the, no, it no. Was, it's a mat. It was just so big that. Okay. But it's it's. It's all, in evidence. It's in evidence. It's all okay. I can print it if I need to. <laughs> Let's save the uh, Chattahoochee uh, Forest. Um, you okay with this approach for now, Mr. Brown? Yes, sir. All right. Let's bring jurors out, please. <clears throat> Mr. Rachelson, are you free Thursday afternoon at, let's say, 3.30? So this same time, but on Thursday. I don't want you to leave yet, but I want to know if yes, I, I block that out. That'll work for you. I'm assuming your client can be that. I don't mean to assume he's less free or more free than you. Okay. 
I'm not sure where Mr. Prater is. He, he said he was going down with Arkansas. Uh, well, um, he is 37 minutes late. <laughs> so I'm going to let you guys know when we're reconvening. We'll certainly, I don't know if Ms. Niles has been emailing him or what, but um, we'll send email out, but I'll be giving you face-to-face -face notice. Okay. Yeah, that works. In fact, why, I, why don't we just say that? So 3.30 Thursday here, same courtroom. I'll look a lot like this. You guys look however you want to look. Um, and um, if Mr. Prater comes back in, I'll tell him. But Ms. Niles will also shoot an email to anyone she's been emailing saying 3.30 on Thursday. I don't think he's been on the distribution yeah. list, but I can provide her with the email. Okay, that'd be great. <laughs> Why don't I have her come out here um, and she can get that from you. Okay. And let, well, you, can just, you can email it to her? Yeah, I can email her. I'll okay. Just do that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'll see you then. Oh, because you personally served him. That's how he knew how to be here. Okay. Yeah. So if you have a, a way to contact him, um, if you'll get that to Ms. Niles. Yes. I okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Gordon. Everyone else, please be seated. So Deputy Gordon provided me with two additional inquiries. One is a request to see what one of you labeled the Goodwill first video of shooting. And it should be queued up there is, is, I can't see that screen, but does that look like the video you're asking about? Oh, that's not the one you want? The blank one? Is there a Hold on, I just want to make sure it's the right video and then we'll go from there. Is this the video you were asking about? Before you press play, you had a question about, is there a way you could? I, I, that I don't know. Okay. Why don't we play it regular speed once? It's not a long video. Um, and then if there's a way to play it more slowly. Should we? Yeah, I'm sorry. I know Mr. Hobbs wants to ask you, but I need to ask the questions, even though the lawyers are the <laughs> true controllers here. Um, play it again on a reduced speed if we're able to do that. Are you able to do that? I should be. If I can't do it on this, I can definitely do it with the um, as a mirror, like with this. Hmm. I can definitely do it if I play it through the screen. <laughs> it will be really slow because it will lag.
Anyone need to play it again? Yes. No, that's fine. I, you, you, you control. Yes, please. The question was, um, what is the time code it starts on? Got it. You're free to take notes, just you can't discuss it in front of us. Process what you want and then group, you can discuss it. Your second card question or request was, please provide the USB drive of the images taken from the phones and you list the three phones. So I understand the phones about which you're interested. What I don't understand is what you, what you want. Believe me. So I, I don't want you to tell us what you believe or you're arguing, just tell me the information you want. Okay. 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 So it's not that you want to go through all 20,000 pages, but there was a page, there were a page, there were pages that were displayed on the screen that you want to see again. In particular, it sounds like um, it was often the first page we started with for a phone that would say McBurney phone and moniker Big Bob and Robert and, and my phone number, one, two, three, four, whatever it would be. Okay. All right. Um, are you able, do you understand what they're asking for, Mr. Hiles? No, I know exactly what they're asking okay. for. Okay. Um, so um, would it be easy to print out those screens and we could see if the lawyers all agree that those screens mm -hmm. could go back with the jury? Because otherwise we're gonna have to put them up on a screen so jurors can take down what they want from that. We can discuss. Mm -hmm. Okay, but why don't you put on the screen now one of what you think it is so we get confirmation and we're not chasing our tails. My recollection is that there, it's almost like the cover page, if you will, if you were getting phone records. Are you Mr. Prater? We're not on the record right now. Okay, um, Mr. Prater, I'm Judge McBurney. Um, you are the defendant in the civil case, Hogan Construction versus you. Um, we are not able to have that hearing today. We've got a jury right here working through a murder case. Um, and so we're a little backed up. Um, the lawyer for Hogan Construction was here along with someone from Hogan Construction and I instructed them to be back here 3.30 on Thursday. Um, if you have contact information, it would make it a lot easier for my staff to reach you. I know you were personally served. That's a pretty inefficient way. And obviously that's not me communicating with you. So I'm going to ask Deputy Gordon to, he's grabbing a card now. If you write down a phone number and an email address that my staff could use, this is not something I'll share with the team Hogan, um, but it's a way for my staff attorney, if she's reaching out to them, we ought to be reaching out to you as well. Um, and so if you could just write that down, then I'll make sure that Ms. Niles gets that. Um, and she'll send a reminder email to you as well as to Mr. Rachelson. That's the lawyer for Hogan saying 3.30 on Thursday, right here. Okay, great. Actually, just write it right there. <laughs> Mr. Hiles, do you find anything yet? I am. I, I don't think uh, because I didn't use the Zoom today, I don't have the most updated Zoom link to display it. Okay. Um, I can give you that Zoom information. <laughs> I think it's the same one from yesterday. <laughs> okay, I just sent it to you. You heard my conversation with Rachelson? I did. Good. Okay, thanks. Good job. You bet. See you on Thursday. Mr. Hiles, this is the login info. Thank you.
just two seconds. Great, so I'm saying it F's in a T. Check the one bit. I just need this yeah um i is this what that for all three phones please take a look don't don't move the monitor just stand in front of it don't just come around that because we're actually using it for please so just come around and look at it there thank you um, so that if we print out that do you have that for all three phones i do okay um can you scroll up a little bit i just want to see if there's a natural start and stop so device information go higher Oop, we don't need all that stuff okay so um, if we do device information and scroll down from device information. Keep going. Okay, so I think it would go down to that Bluetooth device address. So it's basically page two. And you've got that for all three phones? I do. Okay. This is, I don't know if this is what we're, they're asking for or not. Well, I got the nod. That's that's what at least this juror was asking for. Was there additional information? Will that scratch the itch? Yes. Okay. We'll print that page out for all three phones and um, get that back to you. Um, and I'm gonna uh, timing wise, um, as I told you earlier today, you're now in charge of the schedule. So. You go as late as you want tonight, within reason. We need to be able to get you to your cars, and so the shuttle stops running, et cetera. But um, if it's five and you have the energy and willpower to keep going, you go past five, and we will be here. Um, come six-ish, um, I'll work with Deputy Gordon, but we'll probably need to, not too long after six, get you out of the building, um, and then you can start again tomorrow if you don't finish today. I'm not saying you won't finish today. Whenever you want, if you want it to be nine in the morning or 8.30 in the morning or 10 in the morning is your deliberation time. So you should confer about when you want to stop today if you don't finish today um, and when you want to restart tomorrow, just so we know when to expect you. You cannot deliberate without all 12 of you. So you're going to need to agree. Let's go to 545 or you know what? We'll finish. Let's just push through because we're going to get to wherever we're going to get by 545 or we got to come back tomorrow. We know we have to come back tomorrow. So why work late tonight? Um, and let's agree on a time tomorrow. 100% your decision. Um, you just need to let him know. You lose decision-making capacity the closer we get to seven because we have to get you um, back to the lot where you park. Um, but then you tell us when you want to start tomorrow. Okay, any logistical questions? Your friends miss you, your two fellow jurors, but they need to be where they're going to be. So, um, And they got pizza. Thank you. All right. <laughs> If you can cut or screenshot it and send it to me, I can print it right here, unless that's where Mr. Bate was going, was to print it out. He's going to do it, but if we can make it quicker. I, I, he can do it and I can do it. We'll see which is quicker. If you want to send me those three. Um, and we're going to get Mr. Sanders and Mr. Pittman back. Um, and let's take another plea. 
Yeah, but I think it's best to just print the whole page like he's doing. Yep. It's a uh, it's, it's a screenshot. I can't even get it. No, 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 I agree. Print the whole page. And so um, he's going to do that. We'll have Mr. Hoover and Mr. Brown look at those pages before we send them back. Okay. I'm going to give actually help with looking at that because it's located in the spots. Okay. Thanks. Um, if you two would stay here until we get those back so you can green light or not green light them, that would be great. Sure. Do you want to do Young or Payne next, Ms. Wood? Uh, I think Young. All right. Let's do that. Would you agree to do you want to do a specific amount for that presentation? Um. Is it is it a meeting with 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 a meeting How are you, Ms. Rivers? Good, good to see you. I bet. When did this trial start? Last Monday? Yeah, I don't blame you. I'm sorry? That one, when he's requested, he's been doing it, or he's just waiting for it. Lofton? 
I did that one for Miss um, for Euphemia. Yeah. What was the other one? I your question. Eaters. Oh, I need that one because that was a situation where he's got the other case and judge was like, well, it's on the record. The state like has agreed to this. And so I just wanted to put it in the file okay. so that, yes, that's, he's not withdrawing. Yeah. So no rush. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And he's no longer my client. <laughs> yes. Does, does at this point go like an appeals? No, it goes. So judge, I think, has already put it on a calendar. Next month. Yes, it's on a calendar, and it's yeah. I mean, you know as well as I do that his wife or whoever it was that was in here is the one that filed that because it got filed. Without his signature, like five minutes after the plea. Immediately. Did they? I hope they weren't waiting on me to bring Mr. Did you say Young or Payne? Yes, it's Young. Okay. Um, There's a little transition. Deputy Gordon was leaving. Hmm. Um, he has single parenting this week. Um, oh. So. Um, Gordon went that way. So. Yeah. Probably already left. Okay. But he may have been like leaving, leaving. So we need Because I had told her and I don't know okay. where she went. All right. Oh, you guys didn't do the trial. It was interesting seeing the video in slow motion. It doesn't have anything to do with you. It's just interesting seeing. You could see a little bit more about what happened. Yes. Not in terms of who did anything to him, but you could see. Hey, can we get Mr. Young out? Please. Yeah. Yeah. And you see the car, the car pulled away and he's still standing there. So there was some exchange. Oh. The, must have been like well, slider. Yeah. 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 And then he's like, hey, what are you doing? And then okay. he got off a lot of rounds. Yeah. Yeah. But if he, I mean, it was a teeny one. Don't, I mean, don't you think he just had it on him? She's, she's convinced that it wasn't his. That it was one of the guys. Yeah. Okay. But I don't know where those rounds went. <laughs> this? Okay, Mr. Sure. As opposed to well, but we don't know. There could have been three people who got out, and one of the guys who got out had the little gun and fired at a bunch. I don't know where those rounds went. They didn't go into the goodwill. I mean, they they must have been fired away from the building, and that's why it makes more sense that he was doing it because his back is to the building. But I think you about hitting more than once. Yes, yes, agreed. All right. Are you Mr. Young? Yes, sir. Great. Ms. Nix, are you ready? We're going to get on the record, Mr. Young, with your case. It's 23 SC 191910, State versus Antoine Young. And you're charged in this indictment, Mr. Young, with burglary and criminal damage to property in the second degree. Um, Ms. Wood tells me that you're prepared to go forward with a plea. Today, because it's your final plea date, if I sentence you to more than what Ms. Wood asked for, you'll be able to withdraw your plea if that's what you want to do. I'll okay. let you and Ms. Wood talk about it. Um, but uh, I'm not saying that because I think I'm going to disagree with Ms. Wood. I don't know anything about your case. 
And it may be that it's a negotiated plea and I go right along with it. But I want to make sure you understand that you've got this little pressure relief valve. If I come down hard in a way that your lawyer wasn't asking for, you can say, no, thank you. Um, I know I'm on a trial calendar coming up. I'd rather do that. Understand? All right. Ms. Nix um, is going to put you under oath. Once you're under oath, please answer her questions and mine out loud. Um, and we'll go from there. Okay, Ms. Nix. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Young, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that any statements or testimony that you shall give in the matter currently before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Please state your true, correct, and legal name. Antoine Santonio Young. Are you at this time? Antoine, Antoine Santonio Young. Are you at this time taking or under the influence of any medicine, drugs, or alcohol? No, ma'am. Is there a medication that you normally take that you have not taken or been given today? No, oh, ma'am. How old are you? 46. How far have you gone in school? Uh, GED. Is English your native or dominant language? Yes. You understand that you've been charged with the following offenses. Count one, burglary in the first degree, and count two, criminal damage to property in the second degree. Yes. You understand that you have the right to plead either guilty or not guilty to these charges? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that if you plead not guilty or remain silent and refuse to enter any plea at all, then the state is required to prove the charges against you at a jury trial? Yes. Have you had the opportunity to review your rights with your attorney? Yes. Have you had enough time to speak with your attorney about all of the charges in this indictment against you, yes, including I the have. facts and circumstances relating to each charge? Yes, I have. Do you need more time to discuss the case with your lawyer, Ms. Wood? Not really, no. Are you satisfied with her services? Yes. Ms. Wood, do you waive a formal reading of the indictment for purposes of the plea? So waived. And do you waive any and all defects in the indictment for purposes of the plea? We do. Mr. Young, do you remember having been arrested on these charges? Ma'am? Do you remember having been arrested on these charges? How I got arrested? No, do you remember being arrested? Yes, ma'am. Has your attorney advised you of the maximum, the minimum and maximum sentence for each charge to which you're pleading guilty today? Uh, she just asked, she just told me that uh, that uh, she can get me a, uh, a deal. So uh, the negotiated plea today is to uh, two misdemeanors. And so the maximum is uh, 12 months to, to serve on each of them. And the minimum is one day on each of them. So that's the maximum and minimum for each charge to which you're pleading guilty today. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Do you understand that today you're entering a negotiated plea of guilty, which means that the state will recommend the following sentence to the court? In count one, state will reduce the uh, burglary first to criminal trespass. Uh, that is OCGA 16-7-21 subsection B. And will reduce count two criminal damage in the second degree to uh, criminal trespass which is OCGA 16-7-21 subsection A. Uh, the state will recommend a, um, in count one, a 12 month sentence that you serve four months with the balance probated. And in count two that you serve 12 months, I'm sorry, 12 months to be served on probation consecutive to count one. Special conditions are that you have no contact with Marvin Nesbitt uh, N-E-S-B-I-T-T -T, or Renee Giles, it, which is R-E-N-E-E-G-I-L-E-S. -E -E uh, stay away from the incident location and any other uh, properties that uh, Renee Giles has listed as a real estate agent. Uh, restitution to be determined and that you submit to random drug screens. Do you understand that that's the state's recommended sentence? Yes. Do you understand that the court is not required to accept the state's recommended sentence? Yes. Do you understand that the court has the right to sentence you to the maximum possible sentence on each charge? Yes. Do you understand that since there are multiple charges to which you're pleading guilty today, the court also has the right to run those sentences consecutively? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that if the court decides to order a sentence that differs from the negotiated plea you are expecting today, that you have the right to withdraw your plea of guilty? Yes, ma'am. Are you currently on probation or parole anywhere? No, ma'am. You understand that if you are placed on probation of any kind, you cannot violate any criminal laws of any governmental unit? 
Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that if you're on probation, you must follow all the special conditions of your probation? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that if you fail to follow all the special conditions of your probation, then you'll be subject to revocation of that probation for the balance of your sentence? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that you are not allowed to possess or use a firearm while on probation? Yes, ma'am. Are you a United States citizen? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that by entering a plea of guilty today, you are waiving any and all defenses, including any mental health defenses? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that by pleading guilty, you are giving up the following rights? The right to a trial by jury, to remain silent, to confront witnesses against you, to the assistance of counsel, to the presumption of innocence, and the right to appeal if convicted of these charges at trial? Yes, ma'am. Is it your decision to waive these rights and enter a guilty plea today? Yes. Has anyone forced, threatened, or promised you anything to get you to enter a guilty plea? No, ma'am. Is it your decision to enter a guilty plea because you are, in fact, guilty? Yes, of the uh, criminal damages. The misdemeanors that misdemeanors, you're pleading yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How do you plead to the amended charges of uh, two counts of criminal tres trespass, one under um, entering property without permission I and plead guilty, uh, damage? I plead guilty. I plead guilty. Okay, let her finish. Okay. And uh, one under uh, criminal damage to property. Uh, how do you plead in indictment number 23 SC 191910? Plead guilty to that. Is this guilty plea freely and voluntarily given with full knowledge of the charges against you? Yes. Do you understand that you have only limited right to appeal this guilty plea conviction? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that if you wish to challenge the voluntariness of your guilty plea, you must do so by filing a habeas corpus petition? And since these are these are misdemeanors, you have only 12 months from today to do so? Yes, ma'am. Judge, had this case gone to trial, the state would expect the evidence to show that on or about November 30th of 2023, um, the defendant did trespass on the property of 1129 Oak, no Oak Knoll Terrace, which is O-A-K-N-O-L-L -L Terrace. Um, that was a home that, was, that belonged to Marvin Nesbitt, but was being uh, listed for sale by Renee Giles. Uh, while on the property, he uh, damaged the... A realtor lockbox that was holding the keys to this house, um, causing it to be um, useless, I guess. Um, and the, the value of that damage was less than $500. Um, and this occurred in Fulton County. Okay, anything else? Um, the defendant does have four prior felonies. Um, three are drug charges. One is a terrorist threat. The oldest conviction is from 2015 based on the defendant's uh, numerous drug convictions. Um, that's why the state recommended a random drug screens as a condition of this sentence. Okay. Um, as to the restitution, I don't have that amount today, but I believe that it would be um, no more than $250. Okay. Well, if you want to bring everyone together for a restitution hearing, we can always do that. Or maybe you share some paperwork with Ms. Wood and I can um, modify the sentence. But for now, I'll leave that as an open issue, which we can revisit if needed. Ms. Jackson, um, can you share with me um, how many cycles Mr. Young has? And then if you have any more felonies, um, Ms. Nix mentioned four. I'm just wondering if, if that's the universe you see as well. Um, I have the same um, amount of felony convictions as well. He does have a total of 15 cycles, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Um, Ms. Wood. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Young's 48 years old. He's been in custody since November 30th, 2023. So 132 days. Um, we would just ask that you accept the state's recommendation in this case. All right. Mr. Young, um, Tell me um, if you have over the last few years, as you've picked up some of these convictions and whatnot, if you've been wrestling a little bit with drugs or alcohol. And I ask that not because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow the recommendation. I think it's reasonable. The only regret I have is that it's not getting you more help than just some drug screens. Um, and that's not a bad thing. And that may be sort of the limit of what we do. It's not getting you into drug court or any kind of treatment like that. But I don't know you. And it may be that you know what, you have a beer here and there. But it may be that it's more complicated than that. 
and we're doing you a little bit of a disservice saying, good luck, I hope this works. Um, tell me what you think your situation is. Yeah, I don't have any problem. I, I, don't, I feel like I don't have any problems with it, you know. And what is uh, it, though? Is it uh, marijuana? Is it I have, alcohol? I have uh, used drugs in the, in the um, past, and I feel like I can, I can stop when I get ready to stop with it. You can turn it on. You can turn it off. off yes. Okay. So, uh, When's the last I mean, time you had a job? Last time I had a job was, uh, it's been a while. Uh, Do you think that's because of the drugs I, turning on and off that you haven't had a job in a I minute? Got, I, no, I had got sick. I had, uh, got sick. And, um, I, I had, uh, I, uh, let's see what it was. It was poison oak. Poison, poison oak. Poison, yeah, poison oak. I had some marijuana and it had something in it. And I had got sick, and that was like in 2000 and maybe uh, 16, 17, something like that. Yeah, how long were you sick? That's a long time I ago. I was sick for a long time. I had went to uh, Georgia Regional behind me, Georgia okay. Regional, and um, Richmond County. And, okay. Um, I just laid off it. Do you ever take medication to help with whatever got you to Georgia Regional? I mean, they they, they had gave me a... Uh, uh, um, written and something else, but I couldn't deal with it. it okay. It was messing me up. Okay. All right. Well, I hope, Mr. Young, you, you're only 46. You got a lot of years left that um, you you take care of yourself. I find there's a factual basis for your plea to those two counts of criminal trespass, and that your plea is knowing and voluntary, meaning you've understood what we talked about. No one's forcing you to enter the plea. Um Ms. Wood, is it okay if someone from my office signs the indictment for you? Please, Judge. And Ms. Nix? Yes, sir. Mr. Young, is it okay if we electronically sign the indictment for you, indicating your misdemeanor, please? Yes, yes. Great. Um, I'm going to sentence you on count one to 12 months to serve four months with a balance on probation. Mm -hmm. um, and count two would be another 12 months of probation to run consecutive. So it's a total sentence of 24 months. Mm -hmm. Four of them you need to serve. But guess what? You've already served four months. The remaining 20 months will be on probation. Okay. I'm going to waive your supervision fee for the first four months so you can see if you can get yourself a job. Okay. Um, no contact with Mr. Nesbitt, and you need to stay away from that address of 1129 Oak Knoll Terrace. I'm going to have you submit to at least two random drug and alcohol screens every month. Okay. Um, so you're not going to know when it is, but at least twice a month, probation is going to say, hey, we need to see you. Sometimes it may be for a screen. Other times it may not be for a screen. Okay. Okay. Was there anything else, Ms. Nix? Uh, restitution open, which I think we said that earlier. Yep. And then um, stay away from all of the. Oh, any listings of her. Oh, I've got that in the indictment. Um, you also should stay off any property that is being listed by Renee Giles, G-I-L-E-S. You don't know that because there'll be a big sign in the front yard said, I'm Renee Giles. I'm selling this house. Don't go on those properties either. Okay. Okay. All right. Any questions? No, sir. Okay. If you're not out in the next couple of days, um, reach out to Ms. Wood. Okay. Um, and she's going to let you know, you're going to have to plug in with misdemeanor probation. They don't come to you. There's either going to be a phone number or a meeting. Make sure you do that. Because if you don't, they'll be sending me in a few weeks warrant for Antoine Young. I'll fill it out and then I'll contact you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, Judge. Judge, if we could do uh, Mr. Presley, I... I haven't had a chance to talk to him since I realized um, that he was dismissed, but I, I do want to see if he wants to do a stipulation or if he wants to reset it. Okay. Um, I need to get this thing to the jurors first. That's okay. You don't have to move at all. Um, Mr. Hoover, did you have a chance to look at the printouts for each of the three phones? Yes, Your Honor. Any issues with them? No, Your Honor. Mr. Brown? No issues, Your Honor. All right. Um, I just noticed an issue. <laughs> with your own document. Okay. Well, I, I, I brought uh, duplicates of, of one doc, of, of a document. Um, so we have two of the three phones and not three of the three phones? I do have them. I just, I guess when we get print, it, it, uh, it, um,
So I'm confused in the end, of course, um, if no one objects, it's good, but you have two or three. I have three. I just, the, I guess the, what came off, I grabbed the first three, it's turning out. I hit print twice. Okay. And All I'm asking is if you've got three sets, Hoover and Brown have no objections. Let's get those to the jurors. But I only have two sets. I got to go grab them. Okay. Yeah, you looked at this one individually, but it is the exact same as one of the others. Got it. Okay. So number three is on its way, and we'll make sure they're okay with them. In the meantime, can we give them one and two? Yes. Can we tell them they got more time? Yeah. Well, I want to put on the record. We're not on the record right now, so why don't you tell me what you want to? Okay. Get that part to uh, Mr. Sanders' printout. Uh, his phone extraction was entered as 461. I have entered the printout as 461A. And then I have uh, for Mr. Baker's extraction is um, exhibit 459. I have done this printout as 459A. Okay. And then 460A is on its way here. It's sitting on a printer. Yes. Okay. That makes sense. Yep. Okay. But can we please give the jurors those two right now? All right, you want to deal with Presley? Yes, Judge. Let's do that. I'll hold on to this. They can start digesting that. All right, I'll be right back. Judge, can I pass you the address? Yes. Please? Yep, I'll get that to Ms. Nelson. Thank you. It's like a party back there. Use it. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, yeah, I heard some guy was supposed to give a proffer and he didn't. And then Lefford said, Great, bring in a jury. Let's go. What? Luemba on trial. Hey, if you want to stipulate for the time you've been in and keep it moving to precise, we can do it or the state will be set it for a hearing. That's why you're still right. To the fact that you were arrested for this violation, even though it got this to me, it's by this missus still violation. Okay, so I made him, but they let me go. Yes, yeah, so Judge accepts that and then you'll go to your Forsyth County hold. Yeah. Okay. Judge will stipulate. All right, let me just get Mr. Presley's warrant up. All right, let's get on the record. This is position eight from this morning's calendar State versus Darnell Presley. Uh, it was a 19 SC case, 19 SC 171414, uh, a bunch of entering auto counts and a couple other things. And Mr. Presley, while you were on probation, um, it was alleged, I signed a warrant um, in February of this year, alleging that in August of last year, you committed a new crime, aggravated assault here in Fulton County. You also hadn't been paying restitution and paid for over a year, half a year um, restitution. Um, Ms. Nix, who is the prosecutor now for your case, explained to me that your new charge was dismissed um, because an officer didn't show up for a preliminary hearing. Um, that kind of cuts both ways. The charges are dismissed. So right now there are no charges. And the only violation would be you got arrested for something, um, which is a pretty minor violation. Um, I don't want you thinking that those charges are forever gone. The district attorney's office could still decide to indict you because that dismissal simply meant you can't be held on those charges anymore. But if the DA can get the officer to show up for grand jury, um, then you could be indicted. I don't know what they're going to do. That's not my call. It's not your call. But I don't want you to be surprised if six months from now, like, wait, what the heck? What? That, I thought that case went away. It happened before. Pardon me? It happened before. What, that you had charges dismissed and then you got indicted? But they end up dropping them again. Okay. Everybody. And they may drop them again. Um, there are lots of reasons why cases ebb and flow like that. So you know what I'm talking about, is that you can win at a prelim, but it doesn't mean that the case is necessarily dead. It may be. Not only time will tell, but we're here because of this warrant 
there was a technical violation of not paying restitution. And then this more substantive one of getting arrested. Um, Ms. Wood has stipulated on your behalf, yes, I got arrested in August. And no, you haven't been paying restitution. Um, what is your recommendation, Ms. Wood? Provoke 56 days, Judge, and reinstate if there's a significant um, balance left. I'm not sure what's left on that 19SC case. And I would note for the court, he's got a Forsyth County hold. All right. And I'm taking that 56 days is how long Mr. Presley's been in? Yes. Okay. All right. Ms. Nix, um, what's your view as to what we should do? And I'll find out about restitution in just a minute. Oh, yes. I wanted to ask how long he has left on the Oh, yeah. Why don't we figure that out? Good question. Um, Ms. Tucson, thank you for sticking with us. I know it's getting late. Um, uh, we only have one case after this. Um, how much time remains for Mr. Presley? And are you able to tell how much? Two years. And Hold on. And how much uh, restitution remains? Um, in Forsyth, he has three years, six months, and eight days remaining on probation. For Fulton, he has one year, 10 months, and 17 days. Okay. And how about restitution? Oh, sorry. That's all right. I'm going to look at the restitution. Are they conducting trial in that room right there? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was I able to make restitution because it was all that blood. He still owes five thousand fifty. No, that looks like more than five thousand. Fifty-three thousand six hundred and forty-five dollars. One second. 19 this one mm -hmm. 44,495 dollars can you hear me audio Seems like audio went out. Zoom dies at five o'clock, by the way. Typical for a day like this. <laughs> she can't hear anymore. That must be that the Zoom died. But it still says podium. That's showing up. Ms. Jackson, can you hear us? I just connected the podium. I can, you. Your Honor. Whoa, weird stuff's happening. Everything just moved around. Can you hear us now, Miss Tucson? Oh, yep, she's I back. Can, I can hear her again. Did you get that final amount that I stated for? Uh, uh, nope, you just told us we couldn't hear you. What is that final amount? $44,495. Wow, Mr. Presley, you better get a high paying job when you get out. Okay. Um, tell me about Mr. Presley. What's he going to do? Oh, he's going to go to Forsyth next. Yes, Judge. And I'm not certain, but just from what I can see on Odyssey, I do think that that might be a probation. Well, it is probation. We did think about that. So I'm not sure what Forsyth is going to do. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Presley, in light of your stipulation to um, these two violations, I'm going to revoke 60 days, 6 0. I will reinstate the balance because I want you to try to knock a little bit out of that restitution. Um, I don't think you're going to pay all of it and that's life. Um, but uh, when you sort out things in Forsyth, then um, I hope probation starts working with you to get you um, working um, so you can pay some of that down. Um, Ms. Nix, anything else in Mr. Presley's case? Um, no, sir. All right. Um, Ms. Wood, anything else? No, Judge. Thank you. So your next stop is Forsyth. They're going to do what they do and then you should be back. You have a place to live. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Ms. Tucson, you need anything else? Thank you. I just wanted to confirm the the recommend the the what we were gonna do with the Fulton case. We're revoking sixty days, six zero, and reinstating the balance because he has a wee bit of restitution to be paying off. Okay, and then whenever you're um finished with this, Mr. Presley, you do know, and Forsyth, you need to report? 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. I actually want to do one, one. Keep going. The date for credit for time served. Because um, he'll be going over there, looks like, after. Yeah. Um, while I'm looking that up, I will also want to add a condition of probation. And okay. that is um, uh, within three weeks of being released from Forsyth. I don't know when that'll be. Within three weeks of being released from Forsyth. If Mr. Presley is not working at least 20 hours a week, he needs to do 10 hours of community service for each week. You said 20 hours of work? If he's not working at least part-time, i.e. 20 hours a week, then he needs to be doing 10 hours of community service. For each week, he's working less than 20 hours. That'll get him on track to be earning and able to pay a little bit of this restitution in the remaining year and a few months. Um, and the date for t credit for time served is Valentine's, February 14th of this year. Okay, got it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, let's bring Mr. Payne out. We'll try to knock that out. We have one more question. I'll read it to you two. And then when Mr. Hiles is back, we can work through it. It says, clarify intent as it applies to count 10, paragraph one on page six in the jury charge. Murder charge. That's the murder charge. I'm going to see what... Uh, I'm texting Mr. House right now. He's coming back. He's got to, um, he's bringing the um, last printout. Page six. Okay, so if you have any questions during the plea, just stop me and we'll back up. And oh, so okay. they're just trying to understand intent as in the pattern charge vis a vis the murder charge. Ms. Nelson, did you? fix our five o'clock situation with Zoom? Yes, Judge, I was adding the cam cameras. <laughs> Can you hear Pardon me? I was adding the cameras, I did. Okay, it was very smooth, thank you. Okay. All right, um, you are Mr. Payne? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. And Judge, before we get started, Ms. Nix and I were continuing going back and forth before we got to this point. So just for um, to be clear, it'll be like, it's essentially negotiated, but just there's the little thing at the end that I'll ask for. So if it needs to be listed as not negotiated, that's fine. Okay. Um, is it a condition of probation that is non-negotiated or it's Three months difference, and then there's one condition that I just don't think is applicable. Okay, so um, because there's a three months difference, we'll call it non-negotiated okay. just for the paperwork purposes. Um, Mr. Payne, in just a moment, Ms. Nix, who's the prosecutor in your case, is going to put you under oath. Um, once you're under oath, make sure you answer all her questions truthfully and completely, okay? And also make sure you speak up. It's important for the court reporter to be able to hear you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ms. Nix, when you're ready. Oh, before we do that, Mr. Hoover, um, Mr. Brown, any objection to this third, which I guess would be 460A, whatever number we're on? 462A. 462A. Okay. If you'll take it back to the jury and let them know, we'll get to this question in a moment. All right. Ms. Nix, when you're ready. Mr. Payne, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that any statements or testimony that you shall give in the matter currently before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Please state your true, correct, and legal name. Matthew, Matthew Pierce Payne. Are you at this time taking or under the influence of any medicine, drugs, or alcohol? No, no, ma'am. Is there a medication that you normally take that you have not taken or been given today? No, ma'am. How old are you? 49. How far have you gone in school? 
12th grade. Did you graduate high school or you made it to 12th? Yes, yes, sir. Well, I'm sorry, I asked you an or question. Did you graduate high school? Yes, sir. Is English your native or dominant language? Yes, ma'am. You understand that you've been charged with the following offenses. Count one, aggravated assault, and count two, battery. Yes, ma'am. You understand that you have the right to plead either guilty or not guilty to these charges? Yes, ma'am. You understand that if you plead not guilty or remain silent and refuse to enter any plea at all, then the state is required to prove the charges against you at a jury trial? Yes, ma'am. Have you had the opportunity to review your rights with your attorney? Yes, ma'am. Have you had enough time to speak with your attorney about all of the charges in this indictment against you, including the facts and circumstances relating to each charge? Yes, ma'am. Do you need more time to discuss the case with your lawyer, Ms. Wood? No, ma'am. Are you satisfied with her services? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Wood, do you waive a formal reading of the indictment for purposes of the plea? No, so waive. And do you waive any and all defects in the indictment for purposes of the plea? We do. Mr. Payne, do you remember having been arrested on these charges? Yes, ma'am. Has your attorney advised you of the minimum and maximum sentence for each charge to which you're pleading guilty today? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Do you understand that your plea of guilty today is called a non-negotiated plea and that the state may recommend a sentence to the court even without you having agreed to it in advance? Yes, ma'am. Are you... I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I thought you were about to say something. Uh, are you aware that the state's offer is a 10-year sentence, um, that you serve one year with the balance probated, have no contact with Anthony Rice, stay away from all Fulton County libraries, complete anger management, and a drug evaluation and complete any treatment, and uh, complete 60 hours of community service? Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. As to count two, state recommends 12 months to serve concurrent with count one. Have you discussed this offer with your attorney? No, no ma'am, not yet. So what I'm asking for is what we propose. That's the state's offer, okay? So I, I need to make sure I understand. You and Ms. Wood, Mr. Payne, have talked about what the state's recommending and how Ms. Wood's gonna be recommending something a little bit different. So judge, just to be clear, I didn't have that offer when I saw him last week. Okay. We discussed what he wanted Got to it. happen with this case. So I haven't exactly explained to him my, when I get, you know, it's my turn at the end of, to ask. So he's being very accurate that you and he haven't had a chance to discuss the particular recommendation from the state, but he understands that you will press forward with his recommendation, which looks like it's going to be a time served. He's done 271 days. That's the month's difference that we've got here. Yes, Josh. Okay. Let's keep going. Uh, Mr. Payne, do you understand that the court can impose any sentence authorized by law, including a higher sentence than that recommended by the state, up to the maximum sentence for each charge? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that if you enter a non-negotiated plea, uh, you do not have the right to withdraw your plea once the court enters its sentence if it is at or less than what your attorney recommends? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that this is a guilty plea which is permanently recorded on your criminal history? Yes, ma'am. Are you currently on probation or parole anywhere? No, ma'am. Do you understand that if you are placed on probation of any kind, you cannot violate any criminal laws of any governmental unit? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that while you're on probation, you must follow all the special conditions of your probation? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that if you fail to follow all the special conditions of your probation, then you'll be subject to revocation of that probation for the balance of your sentence? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that you are not allowed to possess or use a firearm while on probation? Yes, ma'am. Are you a United States citizen? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that by pleading guilty to a felony, you may not receive, possess, or transport a firearm? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that doing so could result in new criminal charges for which you face a sentence of up to five years? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Do you understand that by pleading guilty to a felony, you also may not use a firearm during a crime in the future? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that if you were in the future to use a firearm during the commission of a crime, you would face a 15-year custodial sentence consecutive to the sentence for the underlying crime? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that by entering a plea of guilty today, you're waiving any and all defenses, including any mental health defenses? 
Yes, ma'am. You understand that by pleading guilty, you are giving up the following rights, the right to a trial by jury, to remain silent, to confront witnesses against you, to the assistance of counsel, to the presumption of innocence, and the right to appeal if convicted of these charges at trial. Yes, ma'am. Is it your decision to waive these rights and enter a guilty plea today? Yes, ma'am. Has anyone forced, threatened, or promised you anything to get you to enter a guilty plea? No, ma'am. Is it your decision to enter a guilty plea because you are in fact guilty? Yes, ma'am. How do you plead to the charges of aggravated assault and battery in indictment number 23 SC 191912? Uh, guilty. Is this guilty plea freely and voluntarily given with full knowledge of the charges against you? Yes, ma'am. You understand that you have only a limited right to appeal this guilty plea conviction? Yes, ma'am. You understand that if you wish to challenge the voluntariness of your guilty plea, you must do so by filing a habeas corpus petition. Yes, ma'am. You understand that for the felony, you have four years to do so, and for the misdemeanor, you have 12 months to do so. Yes, ma'am. Judge, had this case gone to trial, the state would expect the evidence to show that at uh, 1 Margaret Mitchell Square, which is the central Fulton County Library, uh, the defendant uh, did approach Mr. Anthony Rice and struck him in the face and then threatened him with a box cutter, which is a deadly weapon. Uh, the, and this occurred in Fulton County. Um, the defendant has two prior felonies, um, all from St. John's, Florida. One is an aggravated assault against law enforcement and attempted arson, and one is a burglary. Those are from 2020 and 2022, respectively. Um, the state recommends anger management and an alcohol or drug evaluation and treatment, um, no contact with the, the victim, Anthony Rice, and stay away from all Fulton County libraries. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Um, oh, and one thing I, I did forget, Judge, as a part of this plea, the state is agreeing to null process a, a 2007 case that um, the defendant is was picked up on a bench warrant on. Okay, do you have that case number? Yes, it is 07 SC 56173. All right, um, we'll take care of that null process. Um, Ms. Jackson, um, do you have um, different criminal history information or just those two convictions out of Florida? Just those two, Your Honor. Okay, and what's the most recent cycle? This one from July of this year? No, I have November the 20. Well, I guess it would be from July, but prior to that, he was arrested November the 21st, 2021 in Florida for burglary. Okay, got it. Thank you. And thank you for your help today. This is our last matter. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a great one. You bet. Ms. Wood. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Payne is 49 years old. He's originally from Florida. He's been here for a while. Um, Judge, when you say for a while, um, and he can explain, but he's got these convictions from just a few years ago in Florida. Is he a back and forth? So I have, and he can explain if he wants to, Judge. I did have notes that he had been here for nearly 10 years, so I don't know. I think he's got family down there, but I'm sure if he wants to add, he will. Okay. Um, Judge, it's my understanding this incident um, – happened the gentleman um that's listed as the victim here and mr payne were both unhoused at the time um so that is why i was going to ask that we tweak the or the stay away condition because i do know that um the libraries offer several services that would be beneficial to mr payne um judge we are fine with an with evaluation and treatment as recommended i don't know that he would be able to complete the community service at this time i'm asking for a sentence of five serve nine months um, and you know, no further contact with um, the victim judge. Okay. Mr. Payne, um, tell me where your center of gravity is. Is it here in Georgia? Is it down in Florida? Um, probably here in Atlanta, I would think currently, yes, sir. Okay, and you have family or friends here? What makes Atlanta your home rather than I'm Florida? Homeless. I was homeless in Florida and I'm homeless here. Um, let me think. Do you have family in either place? No, no family, no. No family, mm -hmm. okay. What brings you to Atlanta from Florida? 
Um, I had a warrant in Gwinnett, Gwinnett County, I guess. The warrant Gwinnett County, I turned myself in on a warrant. So you came up here to deal with a warrant? In Gwinnett County, yes, sir. Okay, what was the warrant in Gwinnett County for? Uh, criminal trespass, maybe, or something, misdemeanor. How long ago was that? 2017, 2018. Okay, and you just stayed up here? That's yeah, um, Okay. Okay. Do you have any questions, Mr. Payne, about anything we talked about? No, sir. When you get out, where are you going to go? I have no idea. I don't know. Do you have a, a shelter that you prefer? Or you're not a shelter guy? Particularly, no. Okay. But you think you'll stay in the Atlanta area? More than likely for at least a week. If, I, if I'm on probation, I have to report to probation, I guess. It's you will have to report to probation, and they're going to need to know roughly where you are. If you don't have an address, you can't give them one. But let me say this. What you cannot do is leave the state. Okay. So if you figure out a place to be in Gwinnett rather than Fulton, that's okay. You just need to let them know so you're supervised out of Gwinnett. But if you were to decide to go back to Florida, that's a process. You can't just roll on down there because that will be a violation of your probation. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I find there's a factual basis for your plea, Mr. Payne, and that your plea is knowing and voluntary, meaning no one's forcing you to do it. That's the voluntary part. And knowing means you've understood everything. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. I will accept your plea then. I'm sentencing you pursuant to the Probation Options Management Act. That means that while you're on probation, if you have a minor violation, that is a situation for you and probation. But if it's a major violation, that would be you getting arrested again for anything, something like that, that comes back to me. Ms. Wood and Ms. Nix, can we, um, someone from my office, sign the indictment? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I looked up his GCIC. I believe that the, the issue in Gwinnett was a willful obstruction of law enforcement misdemeanor. Okay. Thank you. You can look up your GCIC from here? Well, no, it's, it's uploaded them to the... Oh, into his case file? <laughs> All right. Um, Mr. Payne, is it okay if we electronically sign the indictment for you? Yes, sir. We'll do that. I will make sure that 07SC56173 gets null prost. That means dismiss. You don't need to worry about that case anymore. Um, and in this case, as to count one, I am going to sentence you to um, five years to serve 10 months with the balance on probation and count two will be 10 months to serve. They'll run concurrently with each other. That means at the same time. Um, so that's gonna leave you with four years and two months on probation. I'm gonna waive your probation supervision fees for the first four months in case you're able to get a job. We can always revisit continuing to waive those fees if you remain unemployed, but maybe you'll be able to connect with an employer while you're on probation, number one condition is stay away from Mr. Rice. Do you know who I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Okay. If you see him, you have to walk away. Okay. If you think, hey, I'm going to stay in this spot and he's already there, that's not a spot where you can stay. Okay. If he is at the Central Atlanta Library, you got to leave the uh, library. Okay? Yes, sir. Um, you will need to take an anger management course. And you will need to submit to a drug and alcohol abuse evaluation. And if that expert concludes that you would benefit from any treatment, that treatment will become a part of your probation. Okay. Um, I'm not going to impose the community service. I'm not quite sure how that will play out. Um, I'm focused more on maybe Mr. Payne getting a job. We're not sure how that will play out. And um, for the reasons that Ms. Wood articulated. I'm not going to require him to stay away from libraries. We'll revisit that if there are issues on probation um, about you and libraries. The bigger issue is you staying away from Mr. Rice. Yes, anything sir. else, Ms. Nix? Yes, sir. Mr. Payne, any questions about anything you and I discussed? No, sir. Ms. Wood, anything else? No, sir. thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Tucson, um, can you talk to Mr. Payne about reporting? Excuse me. You need to stay right yes. there. Where are you going to be living, uh, Mr. Payne? Or um, I know Ms. Wood stated you don't have an address at the at the time. How how are you going to get in contact with probation and vice versa? I'm going to walk to the office. Walk to the office. 
From where? From here, from the jail. I don't. I don't. On foot. It sounds like he's going to start out unhoused, and so we need to work with him in that format, Miss Tucson. Okay. I will make sure to notate that um, in his file. I do see a, a old case, so I could put that <clears throat> in his case notes. So, um, when when are when is Mr. Payne anticipated to be released? So he has served um, a big chunk of his sentence. He will not go to the Department of Corrections, I would bet. I sentenced him to 10 months, which is about 300 days. He's done 271 days. So I suspect he'll be released soon from the county jail rather than going to the Department of Corrections. But none of us controls that math. Right. Okay. I'll put that um in the notes to report upon release. And that way um, you coordinate with them, Mr. Payne, about your housing, uh, where what shelter you'll be at. They might have you to report in the office a little bit more um, since they're unable to come out to you, okay? Just make sure you report so that way um, further on down the line and you don't report, they'll, they'll issue you a warrant, okay? You don't wanna have a, a warrant for no report. Do you know where the office is in uh, Fulton County? Uh, more, more than likely. I wrote it down I, for I him. got the address. I can probably get directions. 276 Memorial Drive. It's across from the bus station downtown. Okay. 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 Thank you, Ms. Tucson, for staying late. You are free to go. All right. You guys have a good one. All right. Mr. Hoover, Mr. Brown, if you'd come on up, um, if we could get their clients out once you get him situated. Thanks for your help. Good luck with um, Mr. Ruddick. <laughs> I recommend getting that transcript from New York. All right, Ms. Rivers, you, you still with us? Okay. All right, um, let's get back on the record in Pittman and Sanders. I have a fourth, well, one on the record. Um, Deputy Gordon delivered to the jurors the three, I'm going to call it cover sheets for the three phone extractions. Mr. Hiles printed out the relevant page or pages from each of the three phone extractions that the jurors requested. He shared those hard copies with Mr. Hoover and Mr. Brown. They signed off on them. The first two went to the jury a while ago. The third one, there were printer issues and whatnot, but it made it to the jury more recently. Um, the jurors now have that. Those are the A versions of those three exhibits. I think it was 459, 461, and 462A. Is that correct, Mr. Hiles? I just want to reference the exhibit numbers. That's correct, Your Honor. Mr. Hoover, you agree that it was okay to send those back? Yes, Your Honor, we agree. Mr. Brown? Yes, we agree. All right, question four. Clarify intent as it applies to count 10. Paragraphs, paragraph one on page six in the jury charge. Paragraph one on page six in the jury charge is the pattern charge on intent. 
and count 10 is the murder count. Um, I don't think the jurors need to come out for that. Um, my thought is that I say that paragraph one on page six applies to count 10. Um, I know that count 10, as it's defined, murder as it's defined, talks about intent because there's malice, which is the unlawful intent to kill. Um, but it doesn't contradict, I believe, anything in the pattern charge on intent. Um, so I don't know what else to say other than um, paragraph one on page six applies to count 10. It does, but they're not asking about count eight or count 11. But maybe I should say applies to all counts, including count 10, so that I'm not singling it out to just one count. Yes, that's what I would, that's what I would request. It applies to all counts. Hey, what you doing? What you doing? Or Miss Nelson, mute. There we go. She's probably talking to her granddaughter. Um, Mr. Hoover, are you okay with language to that effect? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Brown? Yes, Your Honor. All right, let me write it out and then I'll read it into the record. And then if you don't mind getting it to the jurors, this was Q4. Paragraph one on page six of the charge applies to all counts, including count 10. You all right with that, Mr. Hiles? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Hoover? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Brown? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Can we take that to them, please? Thank you. Oh yeah, they can go back now. Um, the jurors told Deputy Gordon that they think they may wrap things up today, but they knew they couldn't stay late. Um, but let's um, take um, Mr. Pittman and Mr. Sanders back there and we'll stick around. Is wrap things up as in come back to the I don't, I don't know what that means. I, I didn't do a back and forth with them. I just, that's what Deputy Gordon told me. You're not going too far? No, I'm just grabbing my laptop. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Nix. You're welcome to stay, but I appreciate you cramming all this into the afternoon. Yes, sir. Make sure you have everything for tomorrow. Oh, that's right. Tomorrow afternoon. Poof, today's been zany. Uh, uh, Judge, next year on the public spring break, if I'm uh, still around, could you not pick one of your cases? Uh, yeah. Yeah. God. Yes. There was a new squid. 
I didn't know when we lined it up because I know when my kid's spring break is, it's just a different week. And so that's not being sensitive. And we should probably get a flag, sort of like we get a flag when you guys have the PAC conference. Yeah. I know some judges ignore that, but most of us don't. We don't ignore it. Like, all right, that, that is two weeks in July, August that don't work. We have our conference and just before there's your conference. So we try to build around that. And, and usually, like the different, the various counties, I've seen like APS and Fulton County, they're not always the same week. But this year it was Fulton, APS, uh, Gwinnett, Fayette, and Douglas. I was so like, it's just hitting you from every side. And that was like the first, where I, I mean, the first three witnesses I called said, We've been talking about this for a while. And then my expert on the cell phone said, no, 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 that's the only week I can't. All right. It's hilarious. We're talking about the last person. They love them. Oh, yeah. Your honors, are the mics muted?
Okay. Um, the question again was, is it totally a mistrial if we cannot come to a decision on one count? I've written on the back, a jury can return a unanimous verdict on one, some, or all counts. The mistrial would apply only to the non-unanimous counts for which there is no verdict. Mr. Hiles, that work for you? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Hoover? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Brown? Yes, sir. Okay. You guys don't have to stand up. Thank you. We'll let the jurors digest that. I had asked, um, I can't remember if all three lawyers were here and we didn't have the court reporter, but we didn't have every player, um, if I should let the alternates go home. And the consensus was, yeah, go ahead and do that. But given where we are, I think I'm gonna keep them here um, because um, if, if this, the regular jurors are about done, they were stuck on a count, but not the others. Um, then let's just keep the whole family together. Um, and we'll revisit that in about 10 minutes. Okay, yeah. be at ease. I'll mute the mics again.
Mr. Hiles, can you yes. get the big screen out of the way, please? Ms. Rivers, can we get you out here, please? Here she comes. You ready? Okay. We're going to go back on the record in State versus Pittman and Sanders. The four person has filled out a verdict form in each of the two, well, a verdict form for each of the defendants. Um, so I'm going to bring the jury out in a moment to receive those two verdicts. Mr. Hiles, anything we need to talk about before the jury comes out? No, Your Honor. Mr. Hoover? No, Your Honor. And Mr. Brown? No, Your Honor. Okay. Um, let's bring the jury out. Hold on one second. Okay. Let's bring the jury out, please. <laughs> All right, for the jury. Thank you, Deputy. Everyone else can be seated, please. Madam Foreperson, it's my understanding that the jury has reached verdicts as to the two defendants. Yes. Okay, if you could hand those verdicts to the deputy, please. The alternates are still where I'd like them to be, just in case. Sure. Thank you. But do remind me when we're all done that they're back there. Thank you. Ma'am, I'm going to ask you to stay standing. Um, I have a few questions for you. Um, is the verdict that was reached one that was unanimous amongst your number as to each of the defendants? Yes. And you've dated and signed the two verdict forms? Yes. Okay. If you would now um, publish the verdict, meaning for each count, read as to each defendant. So start with whether it's Pittman or Sanders, count one, count two, and um, publish for the record what decision the jury reached. Okay. So count one, as to criminal's activity. Which, which defendant are we starting defendant, with? I'm sorry, defendant uh, Anthony Sanders. Okay. okay. Count one, as to criminal activity, murder. We, the jury, did not um, come to a non-decision. Uh, count two, criminal gang activity, felony murder, count 11, be the jury, find the defendant guilty. Uh, from, uh, count three, criminal gang activity, felony murder, count 12, be the jury, find the defendant guilty. Count four, criminal activity, aggravated assault, be the jury, find the defendant guilty. Count five, criminal gang activity, hijacking, be the jury, find the defendant guilty. Count six, criminal gang activity, firearm offense, be the jury, find the defendant guilty. Count seven, uh, maintain or be 
increase gang activity if the jury find the defendant guilty. Count eight, obtain a uh, property through criminal gang activity if the defendant find the, we the jury find the defendant guilty. As to count 10, uh, murder, we the defendant, we the, the jury, we did not come up with a verdict. Okay. Uh, count 11, felony murder, aggravated assault, we the jury find the defendant guilty. Count 12, felony murder, hijacking, we the jury find the defendant guilty. Count 13, aggravated assault, we the jury find the defendant guilty. Count 14, uh, hijacking motor vehicle, we the, we the jury find the defendant guilty. As to count 15, possession of firearm during a felony, we the jury find the defendant guilty. And as to Mr. Pittman. Mr. Pittman, uh, as to count one, criminal gang activity, murder, we did not come up with a verdict. Uh, count two, criminal activity, uh, felony murder, count 11, we the jury find the defendant guilty. Count three, criminal gang activity, felony murder, count 12, we the jury find the defendant guilty. Uh, count four, criminal gang activity, aggravated assault, we the jury find the defendant guilty. Count five, criminal gang activity, hijacking, we the jury find the defendant guilty. Count six, criminal gang activity, firearms offense, we the jury find the defendant guilty. Count seven, maintain or increase gang status, we the jury find the defendant guilty. Count eight, obtain property through criminal gang activities, we the jury find the defendant guilty. As to count 10, we did not come up with a verdict, and that is murder. Uh, count 11, felony murder, aggravated assault, we the jury find the defendant guilty. Count 12, felony murder, hijacking, we the jury find the defendant guilty. Count 13, aggravated assault, we the jury find the defendant guilty. Count 14, uh, hijack of, hijacking of a murder vehicle, we the jury find the defendant guilty. Defendant guilty. Uh, count 15, possession of a firearm during the felony. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty. Thank you, ma'am. If you would hand those verdict forms to the deputy, and deputy, if you get them to Mr. Hiles, if we would work them around so that the attorneys can see the verdict forms, please. <laughs> Mr. Hiles, do you have any objection to the form of the verdicts? No, Your Honor. Mr. Hoover, did you have a chance to review the verdict? I did, Your Honor. Do you have any objection to the form of the verdict? No, no, Your Honor. All right. Same question, Mr. Brown, as to Mr. Pittman's verdict form. Any objections to the form of the verdict? No objections to the form of the verdict. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hiles, anything else before um, I release the jury? No, Your Honor. Mr. Hoover? No, Your Honor. Mr. Brown? No, Your Honor. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the lawyers, the parties, and everyone who's participated in this, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, this was a significant investment of your time in what I hope you appreciate was an important matter, obviously for Mr. Pittman and Mr. Sanders, um, also for the survivors of Mr. Denny and people who were concerned with what happened on that day. Um, we can't give you that week and two days back, um, but it's been very important service um, 
and helped us reach a point of closure um, in this important matter. I'm gonna ask you to return to the jury room. We will reunite you with your devices. Got a letter for each of you that documents where you've been in case people have been wondering. Um, and uh, thank you a little more closely there and then you will be on your way. Thank you. Mr. Hoover and Mr. Brown, um, because we weren't sure if the trial would end today, we already have a uh, transport order for both Mr. Pittman and Mr. Sanders tomorrow. We're not going to do sentencing now, given the hour, and I need to let the deputies get out of here. Um, but I'd love to do it tomorrow since they're coming. I don't know your schedules. I know that you're pulled in lots of directions. Um, would you be available tomorrow for sentencing, or do you want more time for sentencing? Let me start with Mr. Brown. I'd be available tomorrow morning. Okay. How about you, Mr. Hoover? I can be here tomorrow morning. Okay. Tell me what that, I have drug court tomorrow morning. I was going to say noon, um, but if that's not going to work with your schedule, I can pause drug court a little bit and do some of drug court and then do more after we do the, the sentencing. Noon is fine. How about you, Mr. Hoover? I'll move some things around. We'll do noon's fine. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, I'll commit to getting done with drug court by noon. If you're here a little early and I'm done early, we can start earlier, but let's aim for noon um, and we'll take it from there. I don't mean to ignore your schedule, but you need to be here at noon tomorrow. Okay, okay. Mr. Hiles? All right. Um, I want to thank everyone for their commitment to moving this case along. It was a long trial. I think it was fairly, very fairly tried by... Um, all participants, um, I look forward to working with each of you again in the future. Um, and Mr. Pittman and Mr. Sanders will see you around noon tomorrow. Thank you. Yes, please. We need both verdicts. I hope the other one didn't walk away. Nope, it's right here. Great. Let you give them to Ms. Nelson. Thanks. Um, and then if you could get the two alternates and in whatever route you want to bring them, bring them to the jury room, please. They're already there. Okay. Ms. Nelson, do you have those? I saw the letters in here. Yeah, I got to put in the last date. Thank you. Okay, you'll bring, I'll tell them they're coming. Because I don't know. Okay. There's to be jurors. Are they going to be able to be there? Or is it too close to the panic? I get out. Um, I'll ask them and I'll let you know. I can guess what they're going to want to do, but I'll let you know. So just stick around for a sec. I'll stick around. Okay.